come on and give God a hand clap of praise right where you are. Glory to the Lamb of God. We thank God, amen, for those that are here, those that are viewing, watching, amen. We bless God. Welcome you to Temple of Faith Sunday morning service, amen. Today is our mission Sunday or casual Sunday, amen, where we begin at 930, amen, a.m. We thank God for you, those again that are stateside. We thank you for taking the time out of your schedule, amen, not to just worship with us, but to give God his. This is about God, amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. This is about what we want to give God. Amen. We've had the opportunity to do, amen, some of the things we wanted to do and needed to do throughout the week. Amen. And how much more, amen, appropriate is it for us to give God what he is requesting, what he is desiring. Amen. And say it's for our benefit. Glory. That's the beautiful part about it. It's for our benefit. Amen. It's voluntary. Amen. But how many of you know, God, it's a blessing. Amen. When he can turn around and say, guess what? I'm going to bless you. Amen. Just for doing what I already expect you to do. Man, that is a blessing. Amen. We bless God. Thank you. Amen. Those of you that are, are here, we thank God. Give God blessings. Amen. Come on and clap it up for our church in Lesotho. Amen. We bless God. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Amen. For what you are doing there. Thank you, church family. Amen. We will see you. We will see you soon. We bless God for you. Amen. For you already had your service and we thank God that you're joining us yet again on this morning. Amen. Bless God. Amen. At this time. Amen. I want to call up Mother Carolyn Hart. Amen. To to give us our morning scripture. Amen. And she can share and elaborate as God leads. Amen. morning good morning this is the day the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it this morning i'm going to be reading from the new king james version new king james version and it's psalms 30. new king james version and psalms 30. the blessedness of answered prayers again new king james version psalms 30 the blessedness of answered prayer I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his. And give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Glory, glory. Now in my prosperity I said I shall never be moved. Lord, by your favor. I have made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face and I was troubled. I cried out to you, O Lord, and to the Lord I made supplication. Yes. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. Yes. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. That was New King James Version, Psalms 30. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 Glory to the Lamb of God. We thank God for you. All right. Glory. We bless God. Thank you so much. Amen. I bless you. Amen. I tell you what. Amen. It's always, amen, a, a blessing, amen, to hear the word of God. I'm telling you, we, we're living in a time now where people are too busy, amen, seemingly in their own mind to read, to pray, to, to come to worship, whatever the case may be, until, say until, until something hits their house. Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. We shouldn't be reactionary. We should be proactive. Amen. 
Amen. And that desire comes from love. We, amen. We thank God for that scripture reading. Amen. If we would, amen, please stand. Amen. We're going to repeat our vision and mission statement together. Glory to the Lamb of God. We thank God on this morning. Hallelujah. Glory for where is there is no vision, people perish. That goes for your family. That goes for your business. That goes for anything that you are involved in. Amen. Amen. And our vision is, let's read it together, to build a global church that equips and empowers individuals to fulfill their calling and purpose dominating in all areas of their lives. Amen. We can go to our mission in all areas of our lives, not some. Amen. Say, I dominate. Glory to the Lamb of God. And our mission is, let's read, to empower and change people's lives with teaching, training, and demonstration of the infallible word of God, equipping individuals to evangelize the world through Jesus Christ. Glory to the Lamb of God. That is your mission. Amen. That is your assignment. You can call yourself 007, 008. I don't care what you call yourself. Glory. But that is part of your assignment. That's part of your mission. Glory to the Lamb of God as believers. And I say that, amen, just to let you know everything that you do, it should point to that. Amen. It should point to advancing the kingdom of God and spreading the word of Jesus Christ, who he is all over the world. Amen. Because he said, until all have heard, basically, that's when I'm going to come back. Amen. So somebody has to get out there. Somebody has to get out of their seats, get out of their homes and go do something. Glory to the Lamb of God. So every time you have an opportunity, to share the word of God, please do so. Amen. And I admonish all of, of us as believers watching and listening. Amen. Stop just trying to evangelize other Christians. Glory. Please go to some that are lost, some that do not know the Lord. Glory to the Lamb of God. We get comfortable with, with ministering to each other, and that's fine, and we're supporting each other. Amen. But there is a lost world out there, some that need to know who Jesus Christ is, what he did. They need to see demonstration of the infallible word of God in your life. Glory. So that means you need to have some proof. Say, I will have proof. Glory to the Lamb of God. Come on, you have to have some results in your life. Glory to the Lamb of God. It's okay to talk about them, hear about them, sing about them. Amen. But at some point, they're going to want to see some proof about him. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. So let's be bold in our confession of faith. Amen. Let's know how to evangelize, right? Something as basic as that. Amen. How to talk with people, meet them right where they are. Amen. Even though you might carry your big Jesus stick, the word of God, please know how to hold that in your sheep. Amen. Until it's time to come out. Glory. Glory to the Lamb of God, just showing people love. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go into prayer. Amen. Immediately following. Amen. We're going to go into worship. Glory to the Lamb of God. We thank God. We bless God on today. Amen. I decree and declare now in Jesus name that yokes will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Mindsets will be changed permanently. Amen. For we will have the mind of Christ in Jesus name. Glory to the Lamb of God. If you have the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, amen, whatever you refer to him as, it is the the spirit of God. Amen. Please pray in that in, in your heavenly language in tongues. Amen. As we go up before the throne of grace. Father, we thank you now in the name of Jesus for this opportunity and time which you've given us right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we come naked. We come unashamed on today in the name of Jesus. We acknowledge you, God, as the only true and living God. We acknowledge you right now in the name of Jesus as our only source, Father, using any and every resource that you show desire, Father, to give us not only our needs, God, but our desires, for it is written, all of our needs are met in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that today, in Jesus' name, you are doing exceeding abundantly above all that we are able to ask or think according to the power that we worketh in us, Father, and we thank you now that we are operating in the spirit of the supernatural. We're operating under the spirit of faith, believing that with you, God, all things are possible. In the name of Jesus, we bow down before you on today. In the name of Jesus, God, there is none before you. There will be none like you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for demonstrating your love towards us with physical action, God, with manifestations, Father, and more importantly, through 
through the giving of your begotten son, Jesus Christ. Glory to the Lamb of God who we acknowledge on this morning. Jesus, you are Lord. Lord, we thank you. You are Lord, Jesus. And we bow down before you on today. Glory to the Lamb of God. We thank you for giving your life on the cross so that we might have life and life more abundantly. We thank you this morning. on Father, that as we seek you first, the kingdom of God, everything else shall be added now. In the name of Jesus, therefore, we stand in the authority and the power which you have given us on the cross. We also, we appropriate those things which you gave us on the cross, which is riches, power, glory, dominion, protection, provision, freedom, God. In the name of Jesus, access to God the Father. In the name of Jesus, we glorify you. We magnify you. We bind to us now in the name of Jesus, the abundant life, which you gave your life for us to have on today. And we decree and declare that we let your mind, God, let your mind, Christ, that was in you be also in us, Father. We will think like you. We will act like you, Father. Glory to the Lamb of God, all for the sake of advancing the kingdom of God. We decree and declare, Father, descend upon us right now. Father, for this place called Temple of Faith is your dwelling place. Hallelujah, you dwell here. You dwell in us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Therefore, there are more than two gathered here. Therefore, you are not only in the midst, Father, but you are manifesting your glory in, through, for, and by us, Father. Glory to the Lamb of God. We take authority now in the name of Jesus over these airwaves, over the internet, Father, over the streaming, God, over bandwidth, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. And we decree and declare, Father, a free flowing of information, God, in the form of revelation as you come forth, God, as we worship you, as you release your word, God, through your servant on today in the name of Jesus. Uh, the word shall go forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside source in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God. Father, we leave anything that we came in with at the door. It is counseled now in the name of Jesus. I take authority. Authority, Father, as your apostle called of Jesus Christ uh, over this atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Father, it is one that is conducive to worship. Uh, it is one that is conducive to praise. Uh, it is one that is conducive to being naked and unashamed before you. Father, we are dealing with some things. Deal with us, God, individually, corporately, in the name of Jesus, uh, as a state, uh, as a municipality, as a country, God, as a world, in the name of Jesus. Father, and we will not rise up in pride and arrogance, Father. We will receive, Father, what you're telling us as individuals, God. And we lay that thing down right now in the name of Jesus. Huh? And, Father, we expect and we receive a refreshing, a refilling right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God. Our praise, our worship. Worship is going up as a sweet smelling savor unto your nostrils, Father. We are here with one accord, huh? We are here with one word, God. We are saying the exact same thing. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. And we cry, Holy, holy, holy. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Hallelujah. For our benefit, God. And we dare not come into your house, God. Hallelujah. And not give you 100% of what we give the world, huh? what we give our job, huh? what we give our spouses, huh? what we give children, what we give any and everything else. Father, glory to the Lamb of God. For it is you that give us strength and the ability and the wisdom and the know how to do those things, Father, and we will not, we will not shortchange you, God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Strengthen these natural bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Ha! Huh? If you give us strength to go to a job, you can give us strength right now. Glory to the Lamb of God.
Soto Sura Babasaya, and Soto Sura de Rebosoya. For you are a God that sits high and looks low, God. Ha Soto Sura Rabasaya, looking to see whom and where ha, that you can pour out your spirit. A to Sura Rabasaya, it does soon written Rabasoya. For just as the adversary, the enemy is seeking, roaming, seeking whom he may devour. You are seeking whom uh, can I impart a greater level of my glory? Uh, to whom can I trust with a greater anointing, God? Uh, to whom can I trust a people to lead, God? To whom, to whom? And therefore, uh, in the name of Jesus, Father, we take no task too lightly, Father. Nothing is too menial for us to do. In the name of Jesus, for you uh, are our Lord and Savior. And you, you bow down to wipe the dirty feet of the disciples, God, demonstrated to us that there is nothing, hallelujah, too low, seemingly too menial, seemingly too insignificant, hallelujah, for us to do, Father. For your word decrees and declare that anything that our hands find to do, that you expect us to do it, Father. Father. So, Lord, forgive us for being slow for it at any given time, God. Forgive us, Father, for sitting in our sealed houses, God. As your house is lacking and in need of things, Father. Glory to the Lamb of God. We thank you right now for a transformational mindset, God. To one God that is a kingdom mindset, God, that is set on exploring you, God. There is more to know about you, God, in the name of Jesus. And the more we submit ourselves to you, God, the more you can pour into us, God. So you will not to force yourself upon any man, Father. Lord, you will let your desire be known unto us all, God. The desire for you to get to know us better and for us to get to know you better, God, in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we must come to you on our own cognition, God. We must come willingly, freely, God. Glory to the Lamb of God, and we do so now. Hallelujah. For we know that you are soon to come back. Glory to the Lamb of God. And we should be about our Father's business, God. Forgive us, Father, for making decisions with these eye gates, God. Forgive us for making carnal decisions, Father, with what may come through these ear gates. In the name of Jesus, for every decision that we make, it must come through the Spirit. We must filter it through your word. We must filter it through your way, God, in the name of Jesus. And therefore, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you've given us the authority and the power to take authority over our soul, over our emotions, God, as we bring it unto subjection of the Spirit of God, which dwells in us. And therefore, Holy Ghost, we command you on today to lead, guide, and direct us only according to the perfect will of God. God, huh? and we command you to enact vengeance huh? upon all of our enemies. Let not one of them escape. Father, Roboto, Romania, for your word says, touch not, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm, Father. And we thank you, Father, that we are your anointed. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. We are the ecclesia. Haturomoboya. We are the apostolos. We are the called out ones, God. And we cry holy on this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We boldly decree and declare huh, corporately and individually, God, huh, that we are part of the end time remnant, God, which you are raising up huh, to, to declare your word in the name of Jesus. We are choosing you again today, God. We are worshiping worshiping you in spirit uh, and in truth. Glory to the Lamb of God. And we shake off God. Hallelujah. Anything but try to come in on us. I cancel it now in the name of Jesus. Any form of worration, flee now in the name of Jesus. Any double-mindedness, flee now in the name of Jesus. I told you, any uncertainty, flee now in the name of Jesus. Any spirit of slowfulness, flee now in the name of Jesus. Uh, any spirit that does not want to reverence you, God, 
flee now in the name of Jesus. Uh, any and everything that is anti-Christ in nature, I denounce and counsel it now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we open up our spirits on today, Father, for you to minister to us, God, through word, uh, through the song, God, uh, and through our individual worship, God, to and we understand, Father, hallelujah, glory to the Lamb of God. Huh? Let our worship, huh? it is for real, God. Huh? We're not entertaining, God. Huh? We're opening up our hearts and minds right now, God. Fill us yet again, God, in the name of Jesus with your word. Huh? Fill us, God, with kingdom precepts, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for everything everything that we've even encountered, God, huh? even to the time that we step foot on this ground, God, which is holy ground. Huh? Glory to the Lamb of God. Soya, huh? There is nothing that is not like you, God, that can stay, God. As it hits the ground, it is burned up in the name of Jesus. Huh? There are angels huh? lying across this property, God. There are angels here, God. Huh? Glory to the Lamb of God, for this house shall be called a house of praise. It shall be called a house of prayer. Hallelujah. It shall be called a house of deliverance. It shall be called a holy house, God. It shall be called your temple of faith, God. Hallelujah. Where you are confirming your word that is preached, your word that is taught, your word that is prayed, your word that is sung. God, you are conforming it, God, with miracles, signs, and wonders, God. Even those, hallelujah, that are streaming, huh? even those that are listening, God, we thank you for going forth toward the anointing, hallelujah. It has no distance, God, huh? and I speak to every country, I speak to every continent, I speak to every family on this morning now in the name of Jesus, huh? be ye whole in the name of Jesus, glory to the Lamb of God. What say ye, says the Lord? Huh? What say ye, says the Lord? Huh? Will you choose me this day? Huh? Says the Lord, will you choose me? Huh? Or will you choose the ways of the world? Huh? Choose now. Huh? Yes, Lord, hallelujah. It is time to rise up. Hallelujah. Body of Christ. No more sitting down on the Lord. Huh? No more sitting down on what he gave you to do. Huh? No more sitting down on the words which he has given you to release to the body of Christ. Christ, for there shall be an increased word of correction. There was sure. Yes, Lord, there shall be an increased word, hallelujah, of edification. Correction is coming to the body of Christ. Glory to the Lamb of God. The work is too great, says the Lord. Glory to the Lamb of God. No more picking me up and putting me down at your leisure. Huh? No more worshiping me and praising me when you think it's convenient. Huh? Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Huh? He is calling for huh? his true sons and daughters. Glory to the Lamb of God who will stand in a state of complacency. Break the place of complacency and will come to a place of commitment. Will come to a place of consistency glory to the Lamb of God. Yes, Lord. For the Lord says, huh? many of us pray and ask, Lord, I want to be used by you, huh? but you do not avail yourself. Tell him, God. He says, I've told you time and time again, huh? you cannot be control of everything. Hallelujah. I am God. Huh? I am the sovereign Lord. 
Uh, I control those characteristics, said the Lord. Uh, glory to the Lamb of God. To Sonia, to Sonia. For there shall be, huh? there must be huh? a complete sellout, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. No more preaching, says the Lord. Hallelujah. No more, no more, no more having a form of godliness. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. No more situational Christianship. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to the Lamb of God. Higher uh, you shift, says the Lord. Uh, a situation shift in your life. Hallelujah. No more, says the Lord. Huh? I need some consistency, says the Lord. Glory to the Lamb of God. I am calling upon you, says the Lord. Huh? I am there knocking yet again at the heart. Huh? Oh, for it is up to you to let me in says the Lord. Uh, glory to the Lamb of God. I did never tell you uh, that it was always going to be easy uh, but I told you it was going to be worth it. Glory to the Lamb of God. For there is nothing too hard uh, for the Lord. For I have told you uh, that upon this rock I build my church. I tell you, oh, can I build on you, says the Lord. I tell you. No Siria Bosoya. Can I trust you, says the Lord. Can I build upon you, says the Lord. Huh? For you will get exactly what you sow. He says you will reap exactly what you sow. Huh? What you give me, says the Lord, is what you will get in business. Huh? It's what you will get in ministry. Huh? What you will get for yourself. Glory to the Lamb of God. Huh? If you give me little, you will receive little, says the Lord. Glory to the Lamb of God. He wants us all on today. Uh, he wants all of our being on this morning. Glory to the Lamb of God. And we boldly decree and declare, Lord, here we are, God. Uh, here we are, Lord. And I call forth a release uh, right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. There is a clarion call on this morning, God. We love you. We appreciate you. We need you, God. Glory to the Lamb of God, I counsel in Jesus' name huh? the spirit of situational Christianship. I counsel it now in the name of Jesus. No more situations when things look good, you want to serve God. No, says the Lord, when things look okay, you want to slack off, says the Lord, huh? because you don't want to do, you don't feel like it. God says, I, He counsels it now in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God, for He is a God that shall be and will be reverenced. Uh, in the manner in which he desires and what he requires uh, and what is mandated in the scripture which he has allowed men to pin by inspiration of the spirit of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. And Father, hallelujah, as we go into worship on this morning, as we praise your name, glory to the Lamb of God. Uh, reveal to us who we are right now. Uh, reveal, God, where we are coming up short, God, why you are also so thanking us for the things that we are doing well. Glory to the Lamb of God, for there is a remnant huh, that is assigned to each of us corporately and individually, God, that we must reach. Glory to the Lamb of God, huh, for your Son is soon to come back, God. We glorify you and magnify you, God. You shall find faith in this house. Glory to the Lamb of God. You shall find results in this house. Huh? You shall see miracles, huh, signs and wonders in this house, God. You will see people getting saved, delivered, and set free in this house, God. And as we go out of those doors, huh, as individual believers with the church in us, God, we will do so yet again by decreeing and declaring your word, hallelujah, for our lives will continue to be a living testimony, God. We thank you for making us wise, God, huh, so that we can win more souls for the 
body of Christ, God. And lastly, I decree and declare now, the ones that you have sent to this particular body of Christ, uh, called Temple of Faith, Church of the Supernatural, I release the clarion call, come forth in the name of Jesus. Angels are on permanent assignment. Huh? Bring them in, God, in the name of Jesus. Huh? And we will wrap them with your love, God. Huh? We will wrap them with your word. Huh? We will teach them your word. Huh? We will teach them right from wrong as you do your part in convicting their spirits as God the Most High. In the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, God. Oh, we thank you for the gift of healing operating in this house. Huh? The gift of tongues prophecy in this house, God. Yes, Lord. The gifts of the Spirit are at full operation here. Glory to the Lamb of God. We thank you, God, that the fivefold is at work in this house, God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Come now, come now. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And let us We decree and declare that right now, huh? Someone is getting healed in their body right now, huh? You are shaking, also. Oh, glory to the Lamb of God. Even right now, God, you are going through radio waves, huh? You are going through television waves, God. Huh? Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. You are permeating this municipality. Huh? You are soya. You are permeating this state of North Carolina. Huh? You are permeating this country huh? called the United States of America. Glory to the Lamb of God. soya. Glory to the Lamb of God. Huh? We will boldly decree and declare that Jesus is still on the throne. On, huh? And that your name is Jesus, oh, oh boy, uh, Jesus the Christ, huh? so, oh, Jesus Christ the anointed one, huh? Jesus Christ the healer, huh? Jesus Christ the deliverer, glory to the Lamb of God, hallelujah. And we thank you on this morning, God. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, hallelujah, glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Father, glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. We don't make no more, no more excuses. I hear you, Lord. No more excuses. We do what we want to do. Hallelujah. And Lord, this body, we want to serve you, God. We want to worship you, God. Hallelujah. Not just in word, but in deed and action. Hallelujah. We were demonstrated, God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. I hear you, Lord. It should not be a struggle to come to the body of Christ when we don't struggle huh, to go to work, huh, when we don't struggle to go on vacations, huh, when we don't struggle to do what we want to do, says the Lord. What are you struggling about? Huh, it's because your heart is not close to me like uh, you think it is. Glory to the Lamb of God. You are marching to the beach of your own drum. It is not the cadence of the spirit that you are walking to. And you wonder why. And you wonder why things are happening right now. It's because you're out of order. It's because you're out of place. It's because you have taken my goodness for granted, says the Lord. I have given you authority to pour down strongholds, huh? but instead of pour them down, you're adding to the stronghold huh? by your rebellious spirit, huh? by 
by your disobedient spirit. I'm telling you time and time again, turn it around, change your ways, change your ways. I have told you time and time again, I show you what you're doing wrong. I show you where you're falling short, but you're rebellious in your spirit. So how much more can I take you say as much as you will as long as you are being disobedient huh? as long as you are being rebellious to my word huh? as long as you are not receiving the correction or Amoya, you will stay right there huh? too many people I huh? said it too many people are using me as a scapegoat huh? it is not me that is causing you to go through huh? it is you says the Lord consider your ways consider your ways I can no longer be at the bottom of your list I can no longer be I can no longer be at the low 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 place of your priority I would no longer be last I would no longer be pushed to the side I would no longer say God you will understand I understand huh, that you don't want to do what I told you to do I understand hallelujah huh, that you don't want to give me huh, what you give the world, I understand. Yes, God, I understand that you say, God, I'm with you, but your heart is far from me. I understand. But your actions speak louder than words. Come up, come up, people. It should not take things to happen in your life for you to do what I've already told you to do huh? to the level that I told you to do it at, huh? to the level of consistency in which I've called you to do. Oh, Glory to the Lamb of God. Father, we thank you. We worship you, Father. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word of correction, God. Hallelujah. That means you love us, God. Huh? That means you don't want us to stay in the same place, God. Glory to the Lamb of God. That means you have more for us on today, God. Glory to the Lamb of God. And as we go up and worship on today, Father, we are preparing our hearts and minds to receive the rhema which you are giving us right now, God, through your anointed vessel on this morning, God. When she opens her mouth, Father, you fill it with the words. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Our hearts and minds are open not only to receive, hallelujah, but we will be consistent appliers of the word. Huh? We will apply your word on a consistent basis, Father, so that you can get all the praise, glory, and honor in and through our lives, Father. We thank you, Father. Glory to the Lamb of God. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Come on right where you are. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. We magnify you, God. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Lord, I don't even need to do praise on you. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Uh, all of my worship god have your way god belongs to you lord hallelujah hallelujah 
you, Lord, you are worthy. And no one can worship you for me. And all the things you've done for me. And no one can worship you for me. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. You, Lord, you are worthy, and no one can worship you for me. And all the things you've done for me. And no one can worship you for me. He's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. He's my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as I'm still breathing, I will always of you and I will not be silent I will always worship you as long as I am breathing I will always worship you, and I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as. I'm still breathing, I will always worship you. Is my worship, is my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship. All of my worship is my worship. All of my worship, receive my worship. All of my worship.
worship. He's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. He's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship, and I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as I am breathing, I will always worship you, and I will, I will not be silent, I will always worship. Of God, there is nothing, God, that will keep me silent, God. As long as I got breath in my body, as long as I got breath in my body, it doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. It's about me and you. It is about me and you. And I need to send you up my worship. I need to send you up my worship because I need you to be able to locate me. I need you to be able to come and see about you, me. I need you to hear my cries. I need you to hear my prayers. Here I am, God. Here I am, God. Here I am, God. As long as I got breath. As long as I got breath. As long as I got breath. It doesn't matter what I face. It doesn't matter what the circumstance is. It doesn't matter what it looks like, God. As long as I got breath. As long as I got breath. As long as I got breath. It doesn't matter if I'm laying on my sick bed. As long as I got breath, God, in my body, you will receive it. You will receive it. You will receive it. You will receive it. Like he says, we could go out and do everything else. 
We can send praise up to everything else. We can acknowledge everything else. We can give everything else our time, on, our attention, our energy, all of that. But where is God's worship? Where is his praise? It's him that came to see about you. It's him that came to see about you. It's him that made that way out of no way. It's him that wrapped his arms around you. It's him that shielded and protected you. It is him that provided for you. It is him. It is him and only him. So send him to worship. Send him to praise. Go and see about him. Hallelujah. Long as I got breath, God. As long as I got breath, God. Doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. Doesn't matter what that friend thinks. Doesn't matter what mama and daddy thinks. As long as I got breath. As long as I got breath. Because I know what you did. I know what you did. I know what you did. They will never see it. They may never see it. Come on, man. But I know. But I know. So long as I got breath in my body. Here is my worship God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 And how many truly know we serve a mighty God? How many can truly say, Lord, you are mighty. Lord, you are mighty. In spite of what I face, in spite of what I go through, God, you are mighty. I may not see it right then in that moment, but I know that you are mighty and you're going to bring me through. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Oh, Lord, how excellent. Is your name in all the earth? You said your glory above the heavens and the earth. When I think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars. No praise is high enough to express how great you are. What a mighty God we serve. Mighty God we serve. Angels bow before the mighty God. We serve, what a mighty God we serve, mighty God we serve, heaven and earth adore, the mighty God we serve, say Lord you're mighty, Lord you're mighty. Lord, 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 you're mighty. Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You said your glory above the heavens and the earth. When I think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and and the the stars. No praise is high enough to express how great you are. What a mighty God we serve. Mighty God we serve. Angels bow before the mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Mighty God, 
the mighty God we serve. Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord Almighty, 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 my protector, 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 my provider, 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 my provider. Say, you're a healer. You're my healer. 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 Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to know that we serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. Lord, you rule over everything and anything in our lives. Lord, you are mighty. Hallelujah. God, you are mighty. And how many truly know that they are a chosen generation? How many truly know who they are in God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like he said, God has showed us. And he told us to come up and come out. Come on, ma'am. Come up and come out. You have to know who you are in God. Yes. You have to know who you are in God and stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm. firm. Stand firm That's right. on that thing. Hallelujah. Got to. We are a chosen generation. We've been called forth to show his excellence. All I require of life, God has given me, and I know who I am. We are a chosen generation, we've been called forth to show His excellence. All I require of life, God has given me, and I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am, what he says I'm at, I know who I am. I know who God says I am, what he says I am, what he says I'm at, I know who I am. We are chosen. We are a chosen generation. We've been called forth to show his excellence. All I require of life, God has given me, and I know who I am. We are a chosen generation, we've been called forth to show His excellence. All I require of life, God has given me, and I know who I am. I know who God says I am. Where he says I am, where he says I'm at, 
I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. When he says I'm man. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. When he says I'm at. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. We are chosen. We are a chosen generation. We've been called forth to show his excellence. All I require of life, God has given me. And I, I know, know who I am. I am. We are chosen. We are a chosen generation. We've been called forth to show his excellence. Yes. All I require of life, God has given me. And I know who I am. I know who God says I am. Where he says I am. Where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm working in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm working in miracles. Yes, I live a life of favor. I know who I am. Say yo. Oh. 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 I know who I am.
remove the fear. Remove the fear. Remove the fear. He said, I have called you. I have called you. I have called you. So I need you to move. I need you to move. I need you to move. And the power that I place down in you. Come on, man. The power that I place down in you. He did. I will give you strength. I will give you strength. I will give you strength. It will not come from you. It will not come from you. It will only come from God. God. It will only come from God. God, come on. It will only come from God. And we already know we work in miracles. We already have people coming up to us and say, Come on, man. I don't know what it is about you. I don't know what it, what prayer you prayed over me. I don't know how you touched me. But when I went to this other person, nothing happened. I didn't see any effects. Nothing changed. Nothing was new. But when you stepped in, when you stepped in, come on, Holy Ghost. When you stepped in, my whole situation changed. Yeah. The whole atmosphere shifted. We worked those miracle saints. We worked those miracles. But it's in the God that works through us. It is in God that works through us. Yes, it is. That we're allowed to do that. That we're able to do that. And we will live in favor. Our life will be full of favor. Favor. Our life will be full of favor. Favor. We will never know. Oh, how did this happen? Where did this come from? Come on, man. Prophesy. Oh, it shouldn't have came like this or it didn't look like this. Or, oh, they went through this or they went through that. Speak. They don't have the favor you have. They don't have the favor Just speak that it. you have. They don't have the favor that you have. You have the favor on your life. You have the favor on your life. You have the favor on your life. Like he said, stay consistent. Stay consistent. Stay consistent. Stay consistent and watch God. And watch God. And watch God. Come on, Holy Ghost. Watch God. Speak, God. He's trying to show us who we are. He's trying to show us who we are. Allow him to do so. Allow him to do so. Allow him to do so. Like he said, it was never meant to be easy. If I don't take you through anything, how are you going to learn anything? Come on now. How are you going to learn how to tackle a situation? If you always go to the same thing over and over. And I have to show you something different. Come on. Come on. I need you to get over this stuff. Come on. I need you to break through this. I need you to come through. Break through. Come on. I need you to walk in faith. I need you to show the faith. I need you to cry out. I need you to pray for those who nobody else will pray for. Come on. But they're waiting on you. Yes. They're waiting on you. 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 they Yes. Coming in, in, Lord. Walk in power. Walk in power. Yes. Come on. It was only because you stepped in. You stepped in. You stepped in when the opportunity presented itself. When the opportunity presented itself. 
representing in hell. Understand that when God says, hey, I need you to release it to somebody. I need you to release it. At release it. Release it. At this time. Right now. Yeah. At this time. Right now. Release it. Because he says no. Mm-hmm. So he says now. He says now. Now. He says now. Right now. Move swiftly. Move swiftly. Those that have been assigned to your hands, release the words. Release. Do not walk in fear. Do not be worried. Do not. Do not be frustrated. Do not be frustrated. Do not be stressed. Do not be stressed. None of those things. That's not what I placed on you. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. You want to try to come on? You want to try? Stay in that place. 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 Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. There is more for you. There is more for you. Yes. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. We receive it. Speak Holy Ghost. Come on, man. Speak. Speak. Speak, Holy Ghost. Accountability. Accountability. And we truly have to take accountability for our actions. For our actions. But like he said, we are walking. We are walking. We are walking. We are walking in power. We are working the miracles. That no one else could work because he assigned it specifically to us. He assigned it specifically to you to do that miracle so that they can see, so that they can see, so that they can see that it was truly God, that it was truly God. Like I said last time, they watch you from a distance. They watch you from a distance and they say, oh, oh, she's supposed to be God feeling. Oh, he's supposed to be God feeling. Oh, he's supposed to, you know, have this. He's supposed to have that. He's supposed to. And so they're waiting. They are waiting. They are truly waiting. We will show them the favor. We will show them the favor. We will show them the favor. And if we don't know who we are, get in God and find out. Get in God and find out. Get in God and find out. We have to walk in our power, saints. We have to walk in our power. We will walk. We will walk. We will walk. And it's crazy when he was praying. I had just texted my mom. I said, I need to get some. I don't know who oil this is. Is this yours? <laughs> I said, I need to get me some oil and I need to get me some little bottles. Because what I saw myself doing when you came to speak to me. I was out of it. I saw myself walking. 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 And not only for myself, walking for others. Walking for others. The ones who won't come into this house. The ones who are just waiting on us to pray for them. Sometimes we have to go out and we have to walk for them. And so I told my mom, I got to get some oil and I got to get some individual bottles. And she said, well, what are you going to do? I said, ASAP. I said, because there's some things. There's some things. There's some things that need to be blocked away from my family. And where they can't stand in and pray for it, or where they don't, they down and out and may not be able to see their way through it, guess what? I'm going to stand in the gap. I am going to stand in the gap. I am going to stand in the gap. I am going to walk. I am going to walk. I am going to walk in the power that I know God placed down in me and break up those things. Break up those things. Break up those things that are trying to attack my family, that are trying to take them out, that is trying to take their, break their mind, that is trying to put them in a state of depression. I'm going to walk it out for them. I'm going to walk it out for them. I'm going to walk it out for them. And I want them to feel it. I want them to feel it. I want them to feel it. I'm not going to say anything to them. I'm just going to show up to the house and just walk. What you doing, Nick? 
I'm just walking. They will feel it. 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 Walk in your power. Walk in your power. Walk in the power that God placed down in you. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. We're getting ready to go right into the word. Amen. The atmosphere is set. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. Come on and stand to your feet. Amen. And just holler out. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Come on right there. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We will bless him with the fruit of our lips. According to the scripture, glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we just need to release glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. It might sound strange to some folks. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. But I believe I read several times where Christ stole away. Amen. He went to a mountain to pray. And I can guarantee you, he probably hollered out to his daddy. Glory. He shed some tears. Glory to the Lamb of God. It's okay is what I'm saying. Glory to the Lamb of God. We have to start normalizing some things. Glory to the Lamb of God. Stop being so spooky spiritual. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I need to cry out. I need to cry out. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory. Look at me strange. It's fine. It's fine. Hallelujah. Glory. They called my Lord and Savior everything else but his right name, but he still kept going. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Come on up. Hallelujah. I could imagine when he was carrying his cross. Hallelujah. There was still naysayers on the side look at you now i thought you was a savior i thought you was a king hallelujah he going through all that pain and carrying the carrying his cross with simon glory to the lamb of god can you just imagine but he kept going so i gotta keep going glory to the lamb of god she told her we cannot quit glory to the lamb of god quitting might be somebody else's portion but it is not ours glory to the lamb of god that is not our dna that we received in our fathers we are more than more than a conqueror hallelujah we are victorious glory you saw it we are walking walking in power that means we have authority therefore we can work some miracles glory to the lamb of god hallelujah glory to the lamb of god come on and praise him right where you are glory to the lamb of god come on hallelujah hallelujah i told you we are not we don't have an ordinary commission therefore we cannot be an ordinary church hallelujah and if you are listening here sitting viewing whatever you're doing you can't be conventional either you can't be ordinary hallelujah we are extraordinary hallelujah operating in the ex supernatural glory to the lamb of god hallelujah a natural part of our life come on glory to the lamb of god after you've done all you can that's the point you got to get there hallelujah you've done all you can glory then you just got to stand on the word of god hallelujah you got to stand still hallelujah even when things vie for your attention glory you got to be able to release that thing and keep going glory to the lamb of god we thank you god we give you praise Glory and honor. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Glory. 
Hallelujah. When the Lord, hallelujah, puts something in your spirit, hallelujah, you have to share it, you all. Glory. I'm talking about the timing, the kairos. Kairos is God's uh, God's timing, that kairos moment, the moment that he tells you. And I tell you, when you carry that thing sometimes, say sometimes, sometimes it can be a little bit burdensome because in your heart, can I help you out? Glory. God is saying, you know, they're not going to receive it. But if that's the time, hear what I'm saying? If that is the time God says, tell them, you have to tell them regardless of what you feel. Hallelujah. Regardless of what you think. I'm talking about when you're hearing God say the word. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Come on and give God another hand clap of praise. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I saw something this morning, too. Go grab Sister Ashley. It's a walk. It's a walk. I saw something, and she spoke it in her words. Amen. And I saw a walking out, walking out, walking out. Hallelujah. Walking out some things. Walking out. And I'm not talking about nothing negative either. Y'all hear what I'm saying? When you walk out some things, you're walking out what's in you. Glory to the Lamb of what's in you. Hallelujah. Glory. Nothing negative. Nothing negative is a walking out. Walking out what's in you. You can't run anymore. Anymore. Hallelujah. We sing a song. You can't run. You cannot hide. Glory. When God says, I have need of you, he means that thing. Glory. See, he'll sit back and wait sometimes. Say sometimes. Sometimes and he'll wait and say, okay, I, I, I done told you what I need you to do. I've told you where I want you to progress to. Amen. But we keep going along and dilly-dallying. Amen. And hilly hee hawing and everything else. And God says, nope, I'm telling you where I want you to be. Well, God, I'm not quite there. He didn't ask you that. He says he's going to get you there. I need you to start moving consistent. Y'all hear that key word, that C word, consistency. Amen. I need to see the consistency. And he, when he wants us to start operating consistently, consistently in something, you're going to keep getting a nudge to keep doing something and keep getting a nudge. And can I tell you, if you're in a house, amen, where leaders discerning God, they're going to push you. Glory, and they're going to push you whether you like it or not. Hallelujah. You might, your bottom lip might stick out and all that stuff, but we're going to push you because we know what God, we know a part of what God has placed inside of you. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. But I saw a walking out. Glory. Just walk her. Just walk her through. Walking out. Hallelujah. You can't run anymore, Sister Ashley. You can't run. Hallelujah. It, you cannot run anymore. Glory to the Lamb of God. Think it not strange. Hallelujah. He picked, started picking you up yet again last December. Amen. And it has continued to flow. Amen. So here it is now, 15 months. 15 months afterward. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory. Can I tell you, one of the things that characterizes a, 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 when you walk in the prophetic, there are there is a word of correction that has to be in the lips, and you have to receive it. And when you walk in the prophetic, can I tell you, you're the one that's going to get the, you're going to get a lot of it yourself. Glory. Hallelujah. When you walk in the fivefold, those those corrections going to come very sharp. Amen. Because of the nature of what you have, God is entrusting you as a special messenger to relay his word. Amen. So those rebukes are going to come very sharp. Amen. And how many of you know, amen, as it relates to what she was saying and God was speaking earlier in prayer, there has to be now a true walking out of what he's placed in you. Glory. And he said, no more excuses. I don't need any more excuses. Glory. I need some miracles. Come on. I need some miracles working. I need the world to reverence and acknowledge the church like it is supposed to. Why? Because these things aren't really there consistently. Miracles, they're looking at hey, you supposed to be a place of miracles. Not that we do things to show the world, but miracles, signs, and wonders are supposed to be characteristic of the body of Christ. Glory to the Lamb of God. But I'm here to let you know that we are walking in them fully. Glory to the Lamb of God. God. Hallelujah. We bless your God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. And Sister Ashley, as God, you were speaking that God says that word did a boomerang and came right back to you. 
it came right back to you. Glory to the Lamb of God. And it says, now you're going to open up your mouth with family, with friends, and you've been holding back. You have a kind heart, a sweet, and that's fine. You know, we're supposed to have a, a heart of flesh. We are supposed to. Glory to the Lamb of God. There's also a time where he will, he will cause or allow that heart to be hardened for his purposes. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hardened in the sense of not care, not mean that you don't care, meaning he needs to take control over your soul and your emotions. Where what about? No, God says now the spirit man has to take over. You have to release this void of your emotions, void of your feelings, void of any familial uh, uh, relationship, void of any uh, how close you are. Amen. He said, I need you to release this word and release it. Glory. And all we have to do is submit ourselves so that it will come out right so that we can say it again in the kairos in the right time and the manner in which he wants to say it in. Glory to the Lamb of God. But he says no more because when we don't do those things, glory, when we don't do those things, the burdens then start coming on us. Glory. Hallelujah. Y'all better hear me by the Spirit of God. Amen. So, Sister Ashley, that word is being released out of your mouth. Glory to the Lamb of God. It's been stirred up for Again, 15 plus months. God said it's now time. It's time to come out. And it's going to come out, amen, whether you want to or not. Meaning you're going to try to hold some things back and he's going not going to allow it. You're going to, and the best way I can describe this is like an out of body experience. If you don't submit to it, you're going to see yourself like, oh my God, am I getting ready to say that? I know it sounds strange, but strike me in the spirit. But the spirit is going to take over your mouth and you're going to speak it out. Why? Because it's about these folks now. He wants them to be saved, delivered, and set free free as well. Glory to the Lamb of God. And some will will rise up against and try to cut you off and try to, I already know that. You know how people do. I already know that. I already know that. If you know it, why aren't you doing it? I tell my children the exact, my young men the exact same thing. If you know it, then why should not, as consistent, y'all remember that C word? Consistent action. Glory to the Lamb of God. Do not let them cut you off. You speak it. You open up your mouth and you say, well, I'm going to be free. Amen. I need to share X, Y, and Z. This is what you need to do. And I hear God saying one of the main things people don't want to hear from you is when you talk about Christ. Well, I already know they do not know Christ like they're supposed to. Let me make that very clear. The word of God says we can have a form of godliness. We can know the vernacular. We can even put up our Honda, 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 Honda. You can do what you wanted. You can have all that, that spiritual jargon, spiritual jargon in their way, not the spirit, Holy Spirit one. Amen. Just to do it because sometimes they just want to shut you up. They don't want to receive what you want to say. And that's a rebellion. Didn't God speak with very rebellious spirit in prayer? That's a rebellious spirit. But he says, guess what? You're walking in power. You're going to open up your mouth and you're going to shut them down. They're going to try to talk over you. You say, no, you're going to listen this time. Because when you talk, you want people to listen. But now I'm speaking in power. I'm speaking on the authority of Jesus Christ. If they don't receive it, that's on them, Sister Ashley. He's strengthening your, your heart even more so. Glory. It does not mean, body of Christ, that we do not care. It means we care to the point of, I cannot want this thing more than you, what you want it. Because the same way you're coming to me and saying, pray, I'm trying to lead you to the same God that I'm praying to. Come on, I'm trying to make you establish those same disciplines that I'm doing. I'm trying to establish, you see why I'm going out on Sundays. Come on. Why are you going every Sunday? Because that's what I have to do. That's what God wants me to do. Glory to the Lamb of God. Speak it. Speak it. Release it. Amen. And you actually you surrender to him. Surrender totally, totally to him. He has a great work for you to do. Amen. You're set aside and set apart for a reason. Glory to the Lamb of God. And that's why on the flip side, you have great successes. Glory to the Lamb of God. A lot of things have, have happened to you and you're like, man, God, this is happening. It's happening. And they're, they're so great in nature. He simply be, says because I can trust you with releasing this word, but that has now increased. That dimension of the and the level of word which you get you have to release, it has shifted and it has gone up. Glory. And you stand firm and fa- firm footed. Let them call you. Now they, that some, I hear you, Holy Ghost. Some are gonna say, Well, she she getting a little too spiritual for me now. Let them speak. God says, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. He says, All he's causing you to do, speak what he says. And he says, why? You're going to see the results because here's the thing for any of us. When God speaks something, he gives us some directions. He gives us some ways to change and shift. If we don't, when stuff starts happening, you can't pray that away. You cannot pray that away. 
You cannot pray that away. We see it in the old. We see it in the New Testament. You cannot pray it away because God says, okay, you, you're fine because now I need to deal with them. Thank you. You may they may still be in your prayers in general. You can't stop this thing right here because now it's not that he told us this morning. It's not tied to what you're praying about. Now we got to take accountability and we got to say, okay, what role am I playing in this thing right here? And he says, when you do it, the tears going to come. You let them finish, but you finish your word. Do it not be moved. How how people have tried to manipulate you with their emotions and feelings, it would not be so anymore from this day forward. Glory to the Lamb of God. You're going to keep shifting and changing and getting stronger in the Lord. Amen. And what he's going to tell you to do, he's going to tell you. That's between you and him. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. But he's getting ready to speak to you very, very clearly, very succinctly about some things. Glory to the Lamb of God. It's in you. It has been in you. And it has to come out now. Glory. Because just like he cares for you, he cares for all of us. He cares for them. They have to know. And once we are in the know, we are held responsible. Y'all understand? We are held responsible. You're not responsible for the word coming to pass. He says, you just release it. It's not your responsibility. But God, you said this was going to change. It will. They have a part to play. And you can't do that for them. Glory. So as you do it, you walk in obedience. Amen. And allow God to do exactly what he tells you to do and where he's calling you to go from here. Amen. Just tell him you surrender. Just say, I surrender. And he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Amen. There's some folks that have to hear your voice. Amen. And he's been priming you and priming you like in like those old pumps. You know, you have to prop this priming and priming. At some point, you become so full, it's got to come out. Amen. So he's going to provide those avenues for you. He's going to provide those platforms for you. So don't be surprised because they are coming in Jesus' name. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Glory. Glory. Come on, just say I'm free, uh, Sister Ashley. Just tell them you're free. You're free. Glory. Glory. Free. Free from people's expectations. Glory. Come on. Glory to the Lamb of God. Because some of them, all, they, just, they just want you to, you know, they just, they, that's Sister Ashley. Come on, that's, that's just Ashley, y'all. I'm not, that's no disrespect, but family, friend, that's just Ashley, y'all. You know, she always talks, she go to church, y'all. She all do that. No, God said they're going to start reverencing who is in you, who you are in him. I'm not just cousin, son, daughter, granddaughter, whatever it is, friend. No, I'm a child of God. And that's going to be very, very clearly seen, very clearly seen. You're, you're going to start seeing things differently. You don't see things from a perspective for a very long time, the Lord says. But now you're going to see it very differently. You're going to hear it differently. But he says it's not from a judgmental place. It's not from what it is. It's from a spiritual place. Because he says now he's going to start showing you the spiritual significance of what's being done, what's not being done. And that's where he's going to start opening up your mouth. Because before it was like, okay, that's okay. And you're going to look now and say, no, it is not okay. And you're going to be very bold and you're going to say it. And God's going to always protect you. You're going to be fine. Glory to the Lamb of God. Even if you, in the beginning phases, you begin to share some things. Sometimes things are feeling so, the, the weight of the word, so to speak. If you all can understand what I'm saying, I don't. I share it later. But you, the, the weight of that word, sometimes it's you. we're pushing through, we, again, our this, this soul and this body. And when we release it, if you have to go cry, let it out. It's fine. But he said, you got it out. You were obedient. And that's the key. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I don't I think sometimes people think corrections and things like that come easy. It is it does not always. Amen. But what does come easy is us submitting to it. If that makes sense. The more we submit, it comes easier. Naturally, it doesn't necessarily mean it gets easy. It will get easier because as we mature and grow and develop, but those words have to come forth. Amen. There's some things he wants to do in some people's lives, and they have to move forward because they are the standstill. And you are a person of motion. You like movement. You like growth. You like you like you like boom, boom, boom. You 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 like to see things flowing so you can identify it spiritually very, very easily. So he says when he starts showing you think these things, now you're not only gonna see it again, what you've been seeing it, but now you're gonna see it and you're gonna see some solutions tied to it. And when you release it, you release it and let it be. And you walk away. Walk away in the sense of again. Don't accept this burden that is up to me to make this thing happen. It is not. 
he tells your family, like he's told some out my for an example. Hey, you're gonna be saved. You're gonna be, you can't make anyone get saved. I can tell you why to tell you to do X, Y, and Z. I'm going about my business. Now you're still in my general prayer. Don't get it wrong, but he won't allow, he's not gonna allow some of this time that you've even spent praying specifically on things that's getting ready to get wiped away soon, too. Amen. Because now it's it's too much time, and he's wanting to now work on you. There's some things he's pulling out of you for you glory because there's another place which he's taking you he's preparing you right now so just receive it in jesus name amen come on to give god a hand clap of praise glory to the lamb of god hallelujah we thank god amen come on young lady amen give us what the lord says amen nope that was a that was just a word amen and i just spoke with someone not not to her specifically i said during the in the body of christ we have to learn to discern a little bit better Amen. Sometimes, <clears throat> glory to the Lamb of God, sometimes there'll be a service, amen, where God's spirit is high, you know, we're shouting, dancing all over the place, and he says, I don't want anything else to follow. And that's what we're going to do, right? And there are some times where he said, okay, that's fine and good. I need a little bit of this put out there. We have to learn to, to, to increase our discernment, especially leaders, amen, to know what God is saying. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. There's no more catering to people. Amen. You cater to people, I'm telling you, you're going to get in trouble with the Lord. Amen. So many leaders trying to be convenient uh, to, for people. Now, there's a level of, con of a convenience, some things that we can do. But when God says do X, Y, and Z, that's the standard. You, do you all get what I'm saying? That's the standard. Come on up. Amen. We don't go to our jobs and say, hey, look, you got this meeting at X, X time. Uh, can you change it to uh, two hours later? I got some work to do. They're going to tell you, oh, you do? Yeah, fine. Well, while you're out there waiting for it, go, come on in and bring all your stuff in and leave it here because you don't tell us what to do. I'm talking about in the natural glory to the lamb of God. So spiritually, how much more, amen, should we be submitting to what he's doing? Amen. Glory to the lamb of God. Y'all heard two words today. One was consistency. Be consistent, consistent. That is very key. Be consistent in all that we do. Consistency helps build you, helps develop you. Glory to the lamb of God. And it will uh, span other things that you place your hands to touch. Amen. Glory to the lamb of God. So at this time, Amen. We're going to allow, amen, God to speak through, amen, his servant, Pastor Misha. Can we thank God, amen, for the word that's coming forth? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you all. So good to see everyone. Praise God. Amen. Amen. On this beautiful Sunday morning, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. Praise God. God has really spoken to us. Amen. Amen. Through. Amen. Uh, Apostle Jones. Praise God. And amen. I, I was trying to write uh, some of what the Lord was saying to us down and I uh, didn't get it all. Praise God. But um, I tell you what. Amen. Um, sometime this evening, I'm going to go back, praise God, and, and capture, amen, what he spoke to us, amen, on the uh, channel, uh, YouTube channel, praise God, that we have as we are live streaming, amen, want to say God bless you, amen, to everyone again that's here, praise God, amen, glory to God, and God bless those who are listening, praise God, and viewing as well, amen, so good to have, amen, Dr. Jones back with us, amen, also, amen, 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 your presence has been missed, praise God, amen, Glory to God. We are going to continue, amen, with what we were talking about, what I had introduced, amen, on last Sunday, something that I had been pondering, amen, and just uh, talking to the Lord about, amen, some time back. And um, and he gave me a release, praise God, to share. And I began to share, uh, to do just a quick little uh, recap of what we introduced, what we talked about on last week. We looked at, praise God, amen, that stanza in the Lord's prayer, amen, you know, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name and so forth. And then when we come down, amen, in that Lord, in the Lord's prayer, and I believe it's in Matthew 9, Praise God. There's a portion in that. There's a stanza in that Lord's prayer where it says, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Praise God. And so we we looked at that. Praise God. Amen. From the perspective of amen, not necessarily, although it is uh, it is indicative of praise God, um, the portion that he meets to us in terms of um, 
uh, finances and so forth. Amen. What we need in order to get through or make it through that day. We looked at it from another perspective, praise God. Amen. Going over and looking at connecting that with um, the children of Israel. Amen. Over in the book of Exodus, praise God. And how, amen, as they were on their journey and and they uh, they they were in need of food, praise God. And, and the scripture tells us, amen, how, amen, God sent down manna from heaven, praise God. And he gave Moses directives, amen, or instructed, instructions rather, amen, on how the children of Israel were to uh, uh, take the manna that they were given, praise God. And he said, give, amen, gather enough, amen, two quarts, praise God, for every person that's in your household. And this would be the amount or this would be the portion that you would have, praise God, for today, praise God. And the, the Bible says over in Exodus that, you know, uh, one, uh, a man's house didn't gather too much and the next man's house didn't gather too little. They had just the right amount. They had just the correct amount of portion that they needed in order to be sustained for that day. And if you come down a little further in that same chapter of Exodus, praise God, it talks about how, amen, the Lord told Moses and Moses instructed the uh, children of Israel that, amen, whatever was left over, praise God, it, amen, it was going to turn to maggots, praise God, amen, and how it released a profuse odor. The Bible says it stank, praise God. And so we talked about that, how God has measured unto every one of us a portion for our day, praise God. We also looked at, amen, the importance of prioritizing. So I want to pick that up, amen, and we're going to go in that same vein, praise God, on today. But I want to show you, amen, we're going to look at someone else in the Bible, amen, as we are focusing on and we're thinking about, praise God, our portion, what our portion is. I believe I had asked everyone on last time that we were together that what is your portion? How do you define your portion? How much, amen, can you handle, amen? And we're and, and I, I want to present that in terms of the task that you have been given, praise God. How much in your daily life can you handle, amen, glory to God. We, when we, we talked about, praise God, amen, glory to God. We, we looked at, amen, uh, 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 what is it, Holy Spirit? We looked at capacity. Also, praise God. And we understood, we understand that, amen, there, there are three components. I think I said four last week, praise God. But amen, you have an emotional capacity, praise God. You have a physiological capacity, amen, your body, your health, uh, your mental capacity, praise God, amen. And then also, glory to God, even your, your daily capacity. How much can you handle as just you? Not not looking at you and everybody else. This is about you. How much can you handle? Amen. Glory to God. I was thinking about my, uh, um, uh, what is, what is those things called? We even have one in the uh, annex, uh, the deep freezer, praise God. And even your freezer at the house. Amen. You know how sometimes we, uh, fill our freezer up with meat, praise God. Amen. And once that freezer is filled up, once that container is filled up, it has met. Amen the set amount of volume that it can contain. It has reached its capacity. And so it is with you and I, praise God. We all have a set capacity. God has given you and I a portion. Glory to God. Amen. And also, amen, glory to God. Dr. Jones has talked about this several times that we all have the ability to become increased in our capacity. Amen. And, and the way that we become increased in capacity is when God gives us the green light. Praise God. And so when we consider when we think about, amen, the children of Israel and how, praise God, some of them had gathered more, praise God, of that manna, praise God, how, amen, glory to God, they went beyond what they were instructed and how, praise God, that manna, it, uh, it turned to maggots, praise God, because they were only given out, they were instructed to do, amen, and have a set amount for them for that day, praise God. And so, so it is with you and I, amen. It's when we begin to alter 
the capacity of which God has measured unto us. We said, amen, over in the book of Romans, how God has dealt to every man the measure of faith, praise God. Amen, God has measured you a certain amount. Amen, even in your daily capacity, your daily workload, amen, there is a certain amount, there is a portion of which you can carry, amen. And anytime you begin to operate, let's say us, anytime we, begin to operate beyond that which is normal. When we begin to alter that, amen, level or amount of capacity, amen, without the green light, when conditions are not favorable, that's when we begin to get in trouble with God. And so we looked at that and we talked about prioritizing, amen. And I, I was telling you all the last time I was driving home, amen, glory to God. And the Lord has said, prioritize your priorities, Amen. We all have priorities. Your priorities are those things that are important to you. Your priorities are those things, those, those, those tasks, those things that are near and dear to your heart. Those are non-negotiables. They're off the table. And so praise God, you think about, you consider the priorities that you have. What's important to you? What are the things that mean most to you? What are your non negotiables when it comes to you, amen, being invited or you being requested to do something, praise God. What's off the table? How do you know when you have red flags or going off and telling you, praise God, that you have, uh, uh, you have committed yourself to something more than what you need to be committed to? We talked about last week, just barely, about the importance of defining, praise God, when we're looking at priorities. How do you define your long-term priorities as opposed to the priorities that are immediate, praise God? There are things that are immediate. They need attention right now. But because we sometimes have the tendency as people, praise God, to overcommit ourselves or get ourselves involved in more tasks or more things that then that God did not require, praise God. Sometimes those things that need immediate attention, those things that are beckoning and buying for us, we can't get to them. Praise God. We can't get to them. And so we find ourselves becoming overwhelmed. And so we have to understand and define for ourselves what our portion is. What is your portion? Amen. The Bible talks about in John 10 and 10, how the thief comes. The thief comes, but to kill, steal, and destroy. Praise God. Amen. In the latter part of that, or the B clause of that scripture, he says, but I have come that you may have life, that you may have it overflowing. You may have an abundance of life. And so we understand that when it comes to, amen, our daily capacity, when it comes to the volume of which we are working out of, praise God, we understand that it's very important. It is imperative for each of us to operate in discernment, praise God, because there are several things, amen, glory to God, that is that is creeping up. And if we are not careful, praise God, we will miss, amen, the thief that's at work. The scripture right here, it says, the thief cometh not, but to for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Praise God. Amen. We have to be able to discern. We have to be able to recognize when there are tasks or, or obligations that are masked by the thief because he's coming to rob you of that time. He's coming to rob you. Amen. Uh, I think I said it like this on last week that there's, there, there, there are tasks, there are assignments, there are activities that's in competition for your walk with God. There are tasks, there are assignments, there are activities, there are obligations, and those things are in competition for your devotion. It's in competition for your time. If you're married, it's in competition for your time with your spouse. Amen. If you are a parent, amen, or a grandparent, there are obligations. The thief is coming. He's coming with an attack. He's coming stealthily to steal and rob you of that time with your grandchild. 
child or your grandchildren. He's coming to rob you of your health, glory to God. And so we, amen, as the Bible says that we have to become wise as serpents, praise God. We have to increase, amen, in our level of discernment so that we will be able to, amen, see, amen, is this something, glory to God, that has come as a distraction? Is this something that has been, that has come, praise God, amen, or has it come for me to actually, amen, commit myself to? And so we looked at all of that and we talked about all of that, praise God, and amen, glory to God. And, and so I want to continue in that same vein, amen, glory to God, amen, just talking today, talking to you today about, amen, avoiding the pitfalls of overcommitment avoiding the pitfalls, avoiding the traps of being overcommitted, praise God. Another word for overcommitment is being overwhelmed. Amen. How do you know that you're overwhelmed? You ever, amen, been overwhelmed? You ever felt frustrated or just doggone tired? Praise God. Amen. What are the signs? How, how do you know, praise God, that you've reached maximum capacity? Glory to God. How do you know? Glory to God. Amen. When we go back and look at or consider the children of Israel, the Lord told them, amen, through Moses that I'm going to give you, praise God, for six days, you'll have manna. Manna is going to come to you. Your portion is going to come to you. And on that sixth day, you're going to gather, you're going to double up the amount because on that seventh day, there will be be no pouring out. There will be no releasing. That is a day that's been dedicated or designed for you to rest. Praise God. Glory to God. And so we have to understand, amen, as people of God, amen, that if we continue to, amen, take on or overcommit ourselves, praise God, we have a lot of tasks, amen, or some, I'll say some tasks that remain unfinished. And we're so busy, we get in a cycle or a system of, of trying to finish one thing, praise God, amen, glory to God. Who was it in the Bible? Who was it? Which, just, which apostle was it that said, I have finished the race? I know I'm on, I'm among some Bible scholars, praise God. But he, uh, I believe it was, I, I don't want to say which one. And I just read it this morning. Paul, praise God, he says, I have finished the race. I have finished. I've completed my course. And so praise God. Amen. The, so the message throughout the Bible that we have been seeing that we have to, as people of God, we have to be people, one of good stewardship. And but two, we have to be people that know how to bring things to a completion, not to have several things open. Praise God. Glory to God. Because when we have many things open, amen, glory to God. Amen. It takes up your time to rest. And we understand that, that God does not get any glory out of us when we are so busy. Amen. He doesn't get any glory. Amen. He gets glory when we're in a refreshed place. He receives the glory when we're rested because we said, amen, that, amen, when you are rested or when you're able to complete your set task for that day, amen, you've given quality work. You've given, you've given quality to what you've produced, praise God. And now you're in a rested state where you can give that time and that attention to God. Amen. When, when your work, praise God, is quality. Amen. When you give of yourself and your service, amen, your product, and it looks good, praise God. This is how God gets the glory because people will come back and compliment you. People will know, amen, they're used to people there, people are used to you. Can I just say this? There are people that are used to you operating in a level of excellence that when you come down from the place of excellence, they'll be able to tell it. They can tell it. People can tell when you are no longer operating in a level of excellence. Praise God. And see, at walking or operating in excellence is about you giving a productive or a quality uh, uh, product, praise God, where God, where the glory of God is seen on that. Amen. And so the enemy understands that he understands, praise God. And so he sends, amen, several tasks and several things. And because we love God and we are zealous for God and we have the heart of God and we have the compassion of God, amen. Uh, uh, he knows that, you know, sometimes, amen, that's zealous part of us because of who we are as loving God and loving God's people, amen, that we sometimes commit, praise God, because we're so kind hearted. And so I want to look at, amen. A very familiar woman in the Bible, praise God, amen, over, you can turn over to Luke, we're going to look at Luke chapter 10 this morning, praise God, amen, a woman who was passionate, 
Amen. Praise God. She was passionate. She was zealous for the Lord. Uh, we're going to be at Luke chapter 10 and we're going to pick it up at the 38th verse of scripture. But she was passionate. She was kind hearted. She loved God. Praise God. Amen. And and um, because of that zeal, that that nature that she had of just wanting to please God, like many of you, you just want to please God and you just want to help. Praise God. You want to, uh, as 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 oftentimes I say, you you are concerned about the successful outcome of someone else as how God is with you. And because of that, praise God, you just say yes. Amen. Glory to God. But sometimes we have to come to a place in our life where we say, you know what? No, I'm putting a pause. I'm suspending things right now. Praise God. And so this woman of God that we're going to look at this morning in Luke chapter 10 and verse number 38, she was zealous for God. She was very zealous. Amen. Uh, wanted to please God. Amen. Wanted God to know, wanted the Lord to know that everything that she did, you know, it's for him. Praise God. She had good intentions, had a good heart. Praise God. Amen. And so let's, let's read. Cause I don't, I, I don't want to go too fast. Amen. Let's read Luke chapter 10. Praise God. And we're going to start at the 38th verse of scripture. It says, now it came to pass that as they went, that he, talking about Jesus, he entered into, amen, a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Praise God. Just like you, amen, when you have, amen, maybe a friend's called you and said, I'm coming in town. Praise God. Or maybe you, amen, went on vacation or went somewhere and, and you made a phone call because you got connections, amen, in that town or city or so forth. And you say, hey, I'm here. You know, you know how sometimes we try to visit everybody before we leave or we try to run by somebody's house or we think that we can go see everybody while we're here, but we can't do that. Praise God. Amen. Because we'll miss somebody. <laughs> amen. And so Jesus, you know, here he is uh, in the village. Amen. Coming through and amen. And uh, Martha caught word. Praise God. Amen. The man of God is in town. He is here. Praise God. Well, I, I'm going to open up my home. Praise God. And so she received him into her house. Amen. And the next verse says, glory to God. That's amen. Amen. Glory to God that. Amen. And she had a sister. She had a sister called Mary. Amen. Which also sat at Jesus's feet and heard his word. Praise God. Amen. Verse number 40, it says, but Martha, let's look at this. Martha was cumbered about. Amen. Cumbered about and uh, much serving. Amen. Had a good heart. She had really good intentions, praise God. Amen. Zealous. Amen. Was coming about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, doest thou not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Praise God. But let's look at Jesus's response. Verse number 41. And, and his response was this. He said, and Jesus answered and said unto, Mar said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Praise God. In verse 42, praise God, says this. He says, but one thing is needful. I want to ask you all today, praise God. I want you to consider what is that one thing? What is that one thing that is needful of you? What is God beckoning to you? What is he trying to, amen, get your attention on in terms of the things that you need to be attending to right now? He knows that you're very very important. He knows that you are, praise God, well connected to people. He knows that you are skilled. He knows that you have several talents and, 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 and people are uh, requesting your services. He knows, praise God, amen, that if you get a phone call at any time, amen, of someone, amen, seeking after you or someone just wanting your expertise or your knowledge, he knows that you'll drop everything that you're doing and you'll go see about that person. But what is needful? What is needful of you right now? Praise God. Jesus said, but one thing is needful and Mary have chosen that good part, which shall 
shall not be taken away from her. Glory to God. We're talking today about avoiding the pitfalls of overcommitment, avoiding the pitfalls of overcommitment. Praise God. How, again, would you define your portion? How do you know, amen, when you have reached your capacity? Praise God. Amen. Because there is a set volume, praise God, amen, that you, amen, are able to carry, praise God. And when that volume, amen, has maxed out, amen, when your vessel, you yourself as the container, when you have maxed out, praise God, the integrity of your container, of you yourself, glory to God, amen, has become compromised. Praise God. We understand that Martha, when we look at the text here, Martha was overly consumed, praise God. Uh, the Amplified Translation says that she was over commit, over occupied and too busy. Praise God. Glory to God. And see, when you are unable to give attention to those priorities, those things that matter most to you, let me tell you what happens. Praise God. Amen. Because we said earlier that there are four areas of capacity. You have an emotional capacity. You have a physiological capacity, your mental capacity, and just your everyday level of capacity in terms of work, praise God. And see what happens, praise God, amen, when you receive a request, amen, when you receive an invitation, praise God, amen, to uh, partake of something else or commit to something else or become obligated to something else. Let me tell you what happened, praise God. You're already working at your level of capacity, amen. You're already doing what you normally do, praise God. You know how to do it well. You've got a system for you. It's working, praise God. And one of the things that we, uh, I just want to repeat this, amen, glory to God, is that just because you finish the amount of task for that day does not necessarily, amen, uh, 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 does not necessarily, I'm trying to step into a hole too early because I want to keep your attention, but just because you're able to complete or you're able to do one task or two tasks in that day, it doesn't necessarily qualify you at that time, amen, to start assuming more, praise God. It just means that you completed the set task for that day, glory to God. Many times what happens, glory to God, is that we have a tendency to think that if we look busy, praise God, then it means that we're more important. We have to be careful with that. Just because I'm busy, uh, glory to God. I, I remember one time a staff member, glory to God, uh, sent me a message. He said, I, uh, this person said, I understand you're busy. I understand you, you, you've you, got a lot uh, and things of that nature, uh, but is it possible that I can do da, 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 da? And so I quickly responded to that person because the last thing I needed that person to think was that I was too busy for them. Praise God. And, 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 and so sometimes we get back to my point. Sometimes we think that just because we're busy, amen, it, it makes us look good. It makes us look important in the eyes of other people. Praise God. But busyness does not necessarily equate to you being effective. Busyness does not necessarily equate to you being impactful. You are e impactful and effective, amen, according to the degree of the things that you are currently working on. And it's not until God gives us the green light, glory to God, hallelujah, that's when we're able, that's when conditions are favorable for us to become increased in capacity. See, it's all about even stewardship with what we have been given given. Praise God. But see, when we have a lot of things or some things that are left unfinished, we have a lot of unfinished works or a lot of unfinished tasks. Praise God. Amen. And we start moving on or we inherit more things. Praise God. Then, then we're, we're, our, our stewardship is at play. Our stewardship has become compromised. And see, Satan knows this. Again, John 10, 10, he's coming to steal your time. 
He's coming to rob you of your time with your loved one. He's coming to rob you of your time for yourself. We're living in a time, praise God, where, amen, Every the, the term today is self-care, self-care. Get your caring, get your time in. But, but, but because you are so overly occupied, you can't even hardly, amen, tend to your own self-care. I don't remember the last time I had a massage, and we love to get massages at least once a month or twice a month. But because we become so overly occupied and Satan knows this, he will use those tasks. He will use those uh, invitations, praise God, amen, as, 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 as highway robbery to steal you and to be so that you and I can become distracted. Praise God. He wants us to become distracted. Glory to God. And so again, just because we are busy doesn't necessarily equate to us being effective. Glory to God. The more busy we are, something is going to go lacking in attention somewhere. Amen. Some some level of quality. If I am more busy or consumed over here, amen. Let me just speak as a wife. Praise God. Then the quality of, of attention that my husband deserves, amen, has become compromised. Praise God. If if I am so overly consumed with so many things, then the quality of my time as being a mother, then the quality of my time, glory to God, amen, as, as even being a grandmother or so forth, praise God, becomes, amen, compromised. Something somewhere is going to go lacking. And Satan knows that. He wants to rob you of that time. He wants to steal. He wants to ultimately destroy your time as a spouse, as a mother, as a grandmother, amen, as, as a grandfather. He he wants to rob you. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy you ultimately. So we have to operate in discernment and understand, praise God, amen, and, and decipher what things are immediate as opposed to what things are long-term. What things are can, are short term? What what requires of my attention right now? Amen. Because two things, two things. Let me go back to my point because I'm a sidebar enough. When we accept the invitation to do something or a uh, request to do something. Let me tell you, two things occur. Two things occur. Amen. Your emotional capacity reaches a level. And the, when you become emotionally embarrassed, uh, excuse me, imbalanced, frustration sets in. And two things are going to occur in that. You're either going to become emotionally frustrated and angry at the person who asked you to uh, uh, be a part of something. Or number two, you're, or you're going to become emotionally frustrated and angry at yourself. Glory to God. And see, sometimes when we become frustrated at the person that asked us for their help, for our help or so forth, we get frustrated and we get mad at them and we do all of that you know they have nothing to do the only thing they did was just come to ask you they don't know that you you're 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 already committed and you you've got this they don't know that but because of your zealous nature your your kind heartedness praise god glory to god you and sometimes you end up saying yes i'll do this glory to god and then you go back you close the door and you say <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are, we become emotionally embarrassed. Excuse me, I don't know why I'm saying embarrassed. Emotionally imbalanced, praise God. And we're frustrated and we're angry. Angry at the person who has nothing to do. They're not, they're nothing whatsoever. And then we're upset and we're angry at ourselves. Glory to God. So we start operating and we start doing. Now we've assigned, we've obligated, we've committed ourselves to this. And, and, and we have all of these things over here going on. But let me tell you something else that occurs. We become physiologically imbalanced. Praise God. Amen. We start Amen. Stress will begin to, amen, uh, manifest. Praise God. Headaches and our body begins to talk to us. We become physiologically exhausted. Praise God. Glory to God. And you know what we keep doing? We keep going. We keep going, praise God. Glory to God. We push the envelope. Sometimes we push the needle without recognizing that this is a spirit of distraction that's at work because it's trying to rob you of your time. And I think I used myself as a uh, an example last Sunday when I said, you ever, you ever had a full day? Amen. And once you get home, praise God, and have dinner, and amen, now it's the evening time, and amen. And I was talking about myself. You know how you pull out your Bible, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, and you think you're going to read? And one of the first things that happened is you start nodding and the eyelids get heavy. 
<laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yes, Lord. Or how about this one? Praise God. Let me just put my sense. I'm out there. I'm out there. How about this? Amen. Maybe the, maybe if this is not you, praise God. Just, to God be the glory. Thank you. Praise God. But let's say if you get a uh, the Lord, we wake up at three in the morning. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Lord is calling you to pray. You get up and you go, you pray. Amen. Glory to God. And then you just fall back to sleep. <laughs> we supposed to be praying. How about this one? How about this one? How about this one? You wake up. Praise God. The Lord is saying it's, it's in the wee hours of the morning. You wake up. Praise God. And, and the Lord is saying, go pray. Go pray. Go pray. And you know what you do? You turn over. You go back to sleep or you hit the snooze button on the alarm and you go back to sleep. I get up about five more minutes. My eyelids, eyelids heavy, boy, heavy. Praise God. And you know why we fall asleep? Praise God. It's because we're tired. The physiological capacity of our body is talking to us. Amen. Glory to God. Or we go into prayer. Let me talk about myself again. We go into prayer at four in the morning and we're laying out praying. Sleep. Get up. I'm going to miss a whole hour. You know what we do to justify it? I'm talking about me now. I don't do this anymore. Uh, <laughs> oh, the Lord put me, he did me like Adam, put me in a deep sleep. <laughs> he didn't put you in a deep sleep. You're tired. Because you have committed, you have overly occupied yourself with things, praise God, amen, because you're zealous, you're kind-hearted, you don't want to turn things down, praise God, amen. But because we, are, we have become so overly committed, and so with Martha, amen, she caught word, praise God, invited the man of God, amen, into her home, and uh, she began, praise God, glory to God, uh, preparing. Amen. The meal wanted to, you know, have a very good presentation, wanted to just, you know, have things set. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Wanted to have everything dressed right. Dressed. Praise God, because she's got the man of God in her house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And so Martha is busy. Praise God. Amen. And nothing taken away from her because there's so much in her. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a lot in her. I don't I'm, I'm not here to bash her. Praise God. Amen. Just want to bring this point up as we're talking about prioritizing our priorities. Amen. Is that she was so busy. She was very busy, praise God. And I can just imagine, praise God, you think about, amen, yourself, amen, during Thanksgiving or Christmas holiday or so forth, and you're in the kitchen, praise God, amen, and you're busy. You, your whole cabinet is, amen, filled. Your countertops is filled with pots and, amen, you got all your, your containers out and you're just busy, praise God, amen. And, and you got to get the uh, dining table set and your you pull your cutlery out and all of your your crystal because you want to have a nice presentation praise God and so Martha she's just at it praise God just going to town glory to God and and and, and then all of a sudden hallelujah she catches herself because she's already look at this she's in an emotionally imbalanced place praise God she's frustrated glory to God hallelujah because somebody is missing Amen. There's supposed to be somebody else in this kitchen besides me. <laughs> it's supposed to be somebody else doing this uh, task besides me. And so she's now emotionally imbalanced, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, she had a zealous heart. Had a zealous heart, praise God. Amen. And so she realizes that her sister is not there. And so she goes to Jesus and she says, Lord, do not you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Glory to God. Bid her, therefore, that she help me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Another translation, New Living Translation says, tell her that I need help. Tell her to get up from where she's at because I need help. See, when we become overly committed, when we become Amen. Overly occupied with things. Glory to God. First, we have to understand this. Glory to God. That, amen. This is something, one, that you took on yourself. You took this on. You, this is your fault. This is your fault. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mary has nothing to do with, with what you're doing. 
because you are doing what you're doing in terms of your task and in terms of your work and in terms of your commitments, praise God. Some of these things are self-induced. They're self-induced because we, we, we assign these things to us without even asking God. Does not the word of God tell us in Matthew 6 and 33 to seek ye first? Seek ye first the kingdom. Seek God first. Then he says all the other things I'm going to add. See, if we put God, if we keep God at the center and we filter every obligation, every task, every assignment, every request, if we filter it through him, he's going to be the one to do the adding because he knows the level of capacity that we can operate in. Glory to God. But see, a lot of times what we do, we take it, praise God, and we don't ask God. We, 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 we bypass him. Hallelujah. And I think he told us, I think I wrote, I wrote this down. He said it earlier this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said it to us all. Amen. Hallelujah. I wrote it down. Holy Spirit. Amen. He told us, amen, through, amen, the man of God earlier. Amen. He said, I can no longer be last. He said, I can no longer be at the bottom of your priorities. Hallelujah. He told us that this morning. Praise God. Amen. And so we have to filter everything through God and let him do the adding, not us adding because I did this. I mastered this. Yes, you mastered it. You did a, 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 a spectacular job. You ma you did the darn thing. You did that. And then we start adding and adding and adding. And you know what happens? We become detracted. Praise God. Our anointing becomes compromised. Praise God. Our prayer time becomes compromised. Praise God. Amen. Now we're walking in emo as emotionally imbalanced Christians and we're just yelling out. Amen. At the first person. Praise God. It's because we're stressed. Physiologically imbalanced. Praise God. And we just go off on someone who has nothing to do with it. But it's because we did not filter these tasks, these things, praise God, through God. Amen. And so this is where conditions are, no, are not good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we have a lot of things going on. Amen. We did the adding. And so Martha is frustrated. Amen. Her stress level is high. Her stress level is high. One, because she wants a, a nice presentation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. But then her stress level changes, praise God, because she's doing all of this by herself. This is self-induced. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. It doesn't say it in the Bible. Let me just use my Holy Ghost imagination. Yeah, the man of God is there. Amen. And all the disciples and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm, I'm sure, I'm just using my Holy Ghost imagination. I'm sure M Martha wanted to have have something nice but did she have to have a 30 plate entree oh. hallelujah <laughs> glory to god she could have prepared something real nice and simple hallelujah and so sometimes we do over and beyond praise god than what's been asked or needed praise god hallelujah and so here she is she's crying out for help she's crying out for help help is an indication, amen, that, amen, someone is experiencing trouble. When we cry out for help, that means that we there is impending danger somewhere. Glory to God. When, when, when a person cries out for help, help me, Holy Spirit, it means that, amen, that you are signaling for relief. Hallelujah. You ever cried out for help? You ever been in a situation or a state where you just needed relief? Lord, relieve me of the relieve me of this. Hallelujah. And so this is what she's doing. She yells out, "Help! Help me!" Glory to God. Hallelujah. She's yelling out that she is in need of being rescued. Hallelujah. She is yelling out help because she realizes that she is in need of being saved from something. Peter, amen, glory to God. Peter, when he stepped out, praise God, because God told him, amen, step out. Lord, if this be you, bid me to come because Peter saw Jesus walking on the water. Amen. And Jesus tells Peter, 
come. Amen. So what happens? Peter, he steps out of the boat and he begins to walk. But amen, glory to God. But then his mind shifts and starts thinking about other things, praise God, that has nothing to do with what he was supposed to be doing at that set time. And because his mind becomes overly occupied with those things that has nothing to do with, with the immediate need. This is what I want to get to. Hallelujah. Peter's mind is set on something but it's not needful. See, what Jesus needed Peter to do at that time was to walk. What Peter, what Jesus needed to do, Peter to do at that time was to focus on him. What Jesus needed Peter to do at that time was to keep your mind on me, Peter. Hallelujah. But Peter started factoring in. Well, I, this is here over here. Peter started factoring in other things. And what did Peter do? He said, Lord, save me. He was crying out for help, hallelujah, because he started sinking. He started sinking. He was sinking in the, in the things, praise God, that had got his attention. He was sinking. See, if he would have stayed focused on what was needed of him at that time, he never would have sunk. He never... Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. My, 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 my. God, Jesus told Mary, Jesus told Martha, praise God, in verse number 41. He said, Martha, you are so concerned about everything else, but you're not concerned about, praise God, what matters right now. He says, Martha, you are careful. You are troubled about many things. Hallelujah. Does not Jesus tell us, amen, in what scripture? He says, take no thought for tomorrow. Take no thought. Hallelujah. For tomorrow. For tomorrow has need of itself. Tomorrow is already taken care of. But because we, we, we have all of this going on, all of this, praise God. Hallelujah. Lord, how you, when is this going to happen? When are you going to do this? Lord, what is this going to look like? Lord, this person here is asking me, well, Lord, I'm supposed to be doing this. Lord, you know, I got to be here and there. You're so careful. You're so flustered about all these things that you can't focus on what's needful right now. Sometimes we're so flustered about all of these other priorities and commitments and things that we're doing that we don't even know. We cannot even recognize what's needed right now. So Mary, Martha, Jesus said, he said, hallelujah. He said, Martha, Martha, you're so flustered. You're so you're concerned about things that you don't need to be concerned with. Praise God. Hallelujah. But let me tell you what we do. Let me tell you what we do as children of God, as people. Praise God. Because I mastered this. I know how to work this. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we, we, we know how to multitask. We use the word multitask. Hallelujah. I can juggle all these things at once. Praise God. And still be in place. No, you're not in place. You're not in place. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because once you mastered and you've done these, now you got to get over here and you start spreading yourself thin. But let me tell you the scripture that we use. Let me tell you, because we like to justify. We like to use the word of God and justify. You know that scripture that says, I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Yes, you can do all things. Glory to God. But let me remind you of another scripture. I didn't give this one, praise God, but jot this one down. It's over in 1 Corinthians, praise God, hallelujah. I feel Holy Spirit just leading me there. 1 Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse number 23, which your bad Self, hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 23. Praise God. We justify. We, I, I can do all things. I can do all things. Uh huh. This is on my plate. I can do it. I got you. Yeah, girl, I got you. Boo, I'm gonna be there. What time? Okay, I got you. Uh huh. Yes, it's Ashley. What time did you say that thing? Uh huh. I got you. I got you, boo boo. You can count me in. I'm there. Uh huh. I forget about you. Yep, I'm gonna be there. You can see me because I can do all things because Christ is strengthening me. We like to justify that thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But can I bring your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 23. All things, glory to God, are lawful. Hallelujah. But are, hallelujah, let me read it. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful. Anything and everything can go. 
but they don't, uh, but all things edify you not. In other words, what he said, all things, and, and then Paul repeats it again and later on down in another chapter. Praise God. Hell, hallelujah. Just because you, all these things are coming at you. Amen. W- what is it benefiting you? See, some of the things that we commit ourselves to, it's not adding value. It's not adding value to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, yes, you got the freedom because God gives us free will. All things are lawful. He says all things aren't all things aren't expedient. All things are lawful for you to do. Yes. But where is it that it, that is that is it's, it's beneficial to you? Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Amplified Version says not all things are profitable. Not all things are constructive to your character. Hallelujah. Not all things that you concern yourself with are profitable for your spiritual life. And we as people of God have to be able to discern the difference. Praise God. Glory to God. And so Mary, Jesus told Mary, he, Jesus told Martha, he said, Martha, you're so busy about busy about things, but some of these things are not beneficial to you right now. Some of these things are not profitable to you right now. He says, turn your attention over to Mary. I need you to see what she's doing. I need you to hone in and focus on what she's doing. You see, Mary had her own set of obligations and things also. There was things that Mary had to do, but you know what Mary did? Mary prioritized and said, I need to be here at the man of God's feet. I need to be present where the word of God is flowing because, amen, in order for me to be able to walk out the commitments and obligations and tasks and invitations that I receive, I need strategy. I need clarity. I need direction. I need to even know if if I'm even supposed to accept it, praise God, because everything is not beneficial. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ha, my, 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 my. And see, we sometimes accept things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. My, my, my. And it puts us, it takes us out of place. We're not present. We're not showing up. Glory to God. And then we find ourselves like God when he was walking through the garden and he was looking for Adam because Adam was out of position. Adam was not where he was supposed to be in terms of, amen, his walk, in terms of, amen, glory to God. Amen. Maybe he was supposed to be walking with God through the cool of the day. Oh, God, what you want to talk about today? Well, you know, but he was out of place. And God was saying, Adam, where are you? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And see, Satan knows this. He knows how to pull you to the left. He knows how to pull you to the right where it leaves God saying, where are you? You're not showing up. Praise God. You're not present. Your body may be here. Let me put this out here. Your body may be here, but you're not here mentally. Praise God. Because your mind is concerned about what's supposed to happen today at three o'clock. Praise God. So you're here and present, but your mind is not here. Glory to God. But Mary put herself in a position where she knew she needed to be in the presence of God, where she can get the word, where she can get built up, where she can get understanding, where she can get clarity, where she can get insight, where she can get revelation, where she can get healing, where she where she can get breakthrough. Praise God. Hallelujah. She said, you know what Mary did? Mary said, yeah, I got a lot of stuff going on, but this is where I need to be. Mary said this is non-negotiable. And this is what has been happening in the church. Satan knows that Christians, amen, have put their relationship with God, amen, it's no longer a non-negotiable. And he's told us that earlier today. Amen. We're saying, you know, well, Lord, you know my heart. Lord, you know I would be there. He said, I know your heart. Your heart is far from me. He, I'm just repeating what he said to us today. Praise God. This is going on in the body of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, my, 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 my. All these catastrophes that are happening in this world. We're supposed to be the people that should shut stuff down and cancel stuff. But we can't do it because we're missing. Praise God. We're not showing up. We're not in his presence. We're not praying. We're not fasting. Praise God. We are not where we're supposed to be. And this is why we have all of this chaos happening in the world. Hallelujah. Because we are too distracted. We are too overcommitted. Oh my God. But Mary said, hallelujah. And I thank God that God is releasing the spirit of Mary in this atmosphere to get us back on track, to get us back in his presence, to get us back in his face. The spirit of Mary is being released in this hour for the church because we have gotten our focus. Hallelujah. And all of this mess is happening because Satan knows they ain't thinking about God. And the Bible tells me in the book of Exodus, amen, according to the Ten Commandments, he says, I'm a jealous God. 
He said, you're supposed to put me first. New Testament for all the New Testament folk. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind and all thy soul. Well, see, when you, lo- when you love God, everything else will take a back seat. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It takes a back seat. Amen. Glory to God. I got to be here. Hallelujah. Because there are things that I need concerning, amen, the task that's before me. Praise God. There are things that I need. Glory to God. There are things that I need on behalf of my family. Praise God. And I got to get in the presence of God. I got to hear from God. I need a word from God. I need to hear from God. Hallelujah. And so this is where Mary was at. And Jesus told Martha, he said, that she, Mary is doing what's needful. So consider your, th- your, your task and things that are beckoning and vying for your attention. It's vying for your time. Praise God. Amen. What are the things that are needful right now? What's immediate? What is God saying? I need you to draw your attention to these. Hallelujah. What is God saying to you in terms of, amen, the things that you're committed to, amen? What things have, what things are operating in chaos that you have not given your attention to or your time to? What, where is the disorder? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ah, when Cain, praise God, murder Abel, glory to God. The, the, the Bible says that his blood was crying out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. With the children of Israel, praise God. Amen. God told Moses, he said, I hear my children crying out. There are things that are crying out for us, but we're missing. They they are in need of us, but we're missing. They're missing because we are overly occupied. He says, Mary has chosen the thing that is needful. Everything else, amen, glory to God. Mary prioritized her walk with me. Mary prioritized her relationship with me. I became non-negotiable. And we have to, as people of God, put him back first as being non-negotiable. Amen, my time, my prayer time, my my, my devotion time, my my Sundays are non-negotiable. My Bible study time is non-negotiable. It's non-negotiable. I'm going to be there. Praise God. I've given the man of God my word and said that I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. Glory to God. I've given God my word and I told the Lord that he could depend on me and I'm going to be there. It's non-negotiable. And can I tell you that when you start lining things back up, amen, putting God first, all those other things will fall in place. All those other things will fall in place. Glory to God. But let me tell you what's going to happen. Amen. Amen. Because Satan is going to test you to see if you are serious. Praise God. Because we, what, it's one thing to say. And the Lord said us to this, uh, said this to us this morning. He said, your actions speak louder than your words. And it's one thing for us to say, I'm going to be there. I'm going to show up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to read. I'm going to wake up and pray. I'm going to set my alarm and so on and so forth. Glory to God. But Satan sees that. He's heard you also. Glory to God. And so he will sin task. He will send things. He will send stuff just to see what you're going to do. Okay. You accomplish it. No, 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 not this one time. Mm -mm, No, no, no. I got it. Mm -mm, I ain't thinking about you. All right. Saint ain't forgot. Come on, let's go to the Bible. We're going to wrap it up right here. When Jesus, the scripture says over in the book of Matthew, and when Jesus, Holy Ghost led Jesus up to the wilderness, praise God. Excuse me. Jesus come out of the wilderness. Holy Ghost led him up to the top of the mountain. Glory to God. Show Satan came. Did Satan come to visit him and show him some bread? No, show him some stones. He said, if you are hungry, turn these stones into bread. And then Jesus' response was, you know, get thee behind me. Then uh, Satan said, all these kingdoms I give to you. And then Jesus came back with the word and said, get thee behind me, so on, so forth. And then Satan came again and showed him something else. Glory to God to see what Jesus would do. Glory to God. And Jesus said, you know, it is written. Yes, get thee behind me. Glory to God. But then the scripture says, Satan went away for a season. And that's where we sometimes forget that just because you said no this time, and you mastered it and you conquered it. You were there and you were present. And you did it again on time number two. He went away for a season, but he's coming back. Because he's going to test and test to see if you really mean what you say in terms of your non-negotiables. And this is what Jesus is telling us today. Amen. Glory to God. He wants us to be emotionally healthy. He wants you to be, praise God, physiologically healthy. He does not want you and I to be 
walking around in frustration. He does not want you and I to be so exhausted that we can't give our t attention and the, the things that are vying and crying out. Praise God. Amen. Our relationships, relationships, our marital relationships and relationship with our children and grandchildren. Praise God. He wants you to be where you can continue to give quality attention, quality time, quality, amen, even to yourself that you can have those, amen, spa days. He wants you to be able to, amen. But until you realize, amen, that your priorities are no longer a priority or your non-negotiables are no longer, amen, uh, non-negotiable, amen, glory to God, you're going to stay committed to things, praise God, glory to God. And so the Lord is telling us today, consider, amen, the things, what is the most needful of you right now? What is the most needful of you? Praise God. As we bring ourselves back into alignment, everything else will come back into alignment. Everything else, amen, glory to God, because those things will know that we mean what we say in terms of our, in terms of our relationship and our walk with God. And so Jesus is telling Martha, he said, Martha, I need you to be right here. This is where you're supposed to be. The Bible doesn't say, and I'm just using my Holy Ghost imagination again. Jesus didn't say he was hungry. He didn't say he was hungry. I'm just using my imagination. But she started doing all these things, you know, she just, just zealous. She had, she had a really good heart, good intentions, you know. Bible doesn't say that. You know, I'm just thinking, you know, sometimes it's good to think outside the box, I'm not trying to take anything away from the scripture or add anything. But, you know, sometimes we, we just do all of these things. We add them to us because we think that these things are needed. And God is saying they're not needed right now. You know, there, there will come a time when that thing may be needed. And whenever that time is needed, is it you? Is it supposed to be you? Which is another thing. We have to understand the, the, the importance of delegation, delegating those things, not accepting those things, because it's not adding to, it's not beneficial, it's not profitable, amen, to my life, my family, the things that you're connected to, the things that are assigned to you, praise God. Glory to God. So focus, consider, amen, those things that are needful of you. What is needed of you right now? What has become neglected, amen, that is, that is yelling out to you, that's out of order, because we got to get back in order. We're out of order, you all. We're out of order. You know, we've got all these things, and God is just, oh, the Lord is just over here. Uh, I, he said it this morning, situational Christians. We become situational Christianship. We, sometimes we walk in that. We pick him up on an as-needed basis, as the situation dictates that I need God. And we become situational. And when we become, we become situational in our relationship, then we become out of order. And we need deliverance. You know, God, deliver me. Lord, save me. But God is such a loving God. He's so merciful and he is so kind. Hallelujah. He's such a father that he's long suffering, that it's not his will that any of us should perish. He's so merciful that he will get our attention and say, uh-uh, don't, don't take that on. Don't assume that. Come to me and bring me all these things that's required that's requested of you. And let filter everything through me. And I'll show you the ones that you, amen, need to be connected to or you need to, amen, be uh giving yourself to now. So let us praise God. Again, I'm going to close right here. If you are feeling overwhelmed, praise God, or if you're feeling uh, just exhausting, exhausted, glory to God. Could it be that you've added more to yourself than what was needful? Praise God. Get back into seeking him first, prioritizing and allowing him, amen, to, amen, bring things into alignment for your day. Lord, what is your will for my life today? What is it that you want me to do today? Who am I to encourage today? And as we continue to seek God and ask him, he will give us the strategy to manage our time. He will give us the strategy to organize our task with the end in mind. And that end is to bring things to a completion, not having things hanging over and left, amen, to be picked up the next day. Glory to God. 
get back into where you are asking God. And if you are, amen, thank God, praise God, continue asking the Lord to show you the things that are needful. The enemy is, he wants to steal your time. He wants to praise God. It's, it's, the enemy is jealous of your time with God. He's jealous. Amen. He's upset that you're having the results that you're having in your life. And so he wants to do everything he can to rob you of that time, to rob you, because he knows if you, as if he, if he could ever pull us or you know, detract us away from those things that we are impactful in those things that we are effective in, then he knows, praise God, we will no longer be effective or impactful in those things. Glory to God. So don't allow, amen, anything to rob you of your time with God. Glory to God. Be, uh, when you set your, ta set your tasks based on what God says and don't add anything to it unless God gives you the green light, unless the conditions are favorable because he wants you to be people of rest where you're able to emanate the glory because, amen, glory to God. The light that's on the inside of us should be shining, not dim because we're tired. Glory to God. But it's, amen, we, we, we give the glory. The glory of God is, amen, uh, released off of us because people see that you're refreshed, you're, you're, you're restored, you feel good, you're giving quality, time, and attention to, amen, uh, those things that are important to you, praise God, and you do it, amen, uh, as the Lord, as the word says, you do it unto the Lord, not out of, amen, like we said last week, the taskmaster. You don't have to grind and hustle. That's not your portion, praise God. When you, the measure that God has measured or meted to you for that day, when you can accomplish those things for that day, that's when God gets the glory. That's when he gets the glory because it gets the attention of other people and people want to know, how is it that you did what you did? What, you know, give God glory. Amen. You look good to God. It's an opportunity for you to say his name and the Lord did this. How's the word? Were you able to write that report? My Lord, have mercy. On top of the other things that you already do, no, your desk is full. How were you able to do that? It's because I I've, I've took the time to be in God's feet. And I've allowed him to give me the strategy on, praise God, should I, amen, do this narrative for this report for this day or do I do these? I allow God to give me direction and clarity on what task to do right now. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Don't allow any situation to rob you of your time, rob you of your personal time, rob you of your spiritual time. Don't allow people. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. As amen. We've heard earlier today, they have to get it for themselves. Amen. Glory to God. We have loving hearts, giving hearts, but sometimes we have to be cautious, cognizant of amen. Is this something that is trying to pull me away or is this something that I'm supposed to do? So we have to be mindful of that as well. Praise God. I have to be mindful. Just ask God. The Lord will tell you. And when you feel peace in your spirit, that's how you know conditions are favorable and you are you can increase that capacity because God will grace you. There's a grace for every level of increase when it comes to your capacity. There's a grace. 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 There's a grace and then there's an anointing that comes with that level of capacity. Amen. So let's be mindful of that. Praise God. The enemy is after your grace. He's after your anointing. Amen. Glory to God. He's after your power. He's after your power. He is after your ability to be effective and impactful in those areas. The word of God says in Isaiah that we're to build up the old waste places. We are the restorers or the repairs of the breach. But if I'm too over, I'm, I'm fresh, I'm tired and I'm emotionally spent and I'm mentally, I don't have the mental space for that. Praise God. Then what can I repair? What can I restore? Because I don't have the mental capacity. I'm, I'm, I'm about my, mm, you know, so all those things. Keep yourself balanced and whole. We are the vessels of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit loves, loves to dwell in a vessel that's peaceful. It's at peace. It's well rested and healthy. Praise God. We are the vessels of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And our vessel should not be filled with stress and uh, anxiety and, and uh, all those things. Praise God. So let's be cognizant or aware of our vessel. 
Glory to God. Amen. 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 Let's, amen. I'm going to put us all back into the hands. I pray that I've said something. Amen. To everyone, praise God. Amen. So that you can avoid the pitfalls of overcommitment. Glory to God. We have to be wise as serpents in this hour. Glory to God. Amen. Yes, things are lawful. Yes, things are good. But is it really beneficial to you right now? Is it needed of you right now? Glory to God. Amen. Is this something else that someone else is supposed to be doing? Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. I'm not taking on another thing that's meant for someone else. Can't do it. Can't do it. Because something over here is crying out for me. Come on. Come on up like you did me earlier. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Praise God. Let's, let's be in, at the feet and at the position. Don't compromise your posture. Don't compromise your posture for anything. Glory to God. Let's be where we are needed. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Come on and give God a praise on this afternoon now. Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. We thank God for that word. That is so powerful. Amen. Because it's needed. It's needed. Amen. And that is such a powerful uh, example and that was thousands of years ago and it's still applicable still applicable how he's just saying lay out priorities amen amen and he he i love what he's saying we can prepare for our kingdom uh investment at this time as well i'm going to share uh, to give you time to prepare uh, we're giving those of you that are listening and viewing thank you so much for joining us on today we are preparing for our kingdom investment glory to the lamb of god amen but that's always one of many many Awesome examples, amen, of how God says just prioritize. And it, it's a level of trust, you all, what it amounts to. If we trust God that he knows what we're doing, and it shows that we are delivered from people. And when I say that, meaning we, the accolades of people, some haven't, it, we, it's not delivered yet from the accolades of men. We want people's attention so much. We want to be in this group and that group. It becomes clickish, and God's like, uh, you're not going to fit in. You're peculiar. You're not going to get in. You're not going to fit in. You're not going to fit in. They're going to say all things about you. Oh, you look, you, you stuck up. You to yourself and say what you want to. I'm not rolling in them clicks. I'm just not doing it. And you can't do it either. We're peculiar because at some point in time, you have to be set apart. When something comes through, something comes down, I'm telling you, the ones that, yeah, yeah, you're smiling, you're hey, yeah, yeah, they're looking to see how you're going to react. You react like them. I thought they were supposed to be saved. You still say, but actually they're going to say it. And so it diminishes our witness. Amen. Is that making sense? Amen. It's making out. So we have to be consistent. We're going to, and it's, uh, uh, just imagine what Christ felt talking about being isolated and things of that nature. Look at what he could, what he went through. Amen. Confessing, knowing that you have been, have the title of Messiah, of the deliverer, the anointed one, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the one that's going to deliver a people. And here you are riding into town on a donkey, right on a workhorse. Come on. Yeah, don't tell me that they, they weren't embarrassed. They were. They were embarrassed. That ain't my king. And, all, and you see it in their actions, right? Glory to the Lamb of God. But even Christ, with all of that attention that he had and all that pressure, because if anybody had an opportunity to conform and get in a click, it was Jesus. He did. He was like, look, you can get on, on my, come on over here with me. But that's why I love it, how God had him to choose. Listen to this. He didn't choose on his own cognition. He even went to the Lord before he chose the disciples. He went into prayer. And the Lord told him where to go. Get this one right here. He's stealing. He's cheating on his taxes. Get that one right there. Come on. Get this one right here. He going to betray you now, You, but you still got to choose. Come on, you all. That's to tell you, we're not in control or anything. When we really submit to God and say, God, your will, he'll, it, it, he'll, he'll take the foolish things, as he says, to confound the wise. He will do it. But he chose people from all walks of life to say, hey, if you would just... Be consistent, invest the time in them, operate in the love that I have. I can change anybody. He can. He'll use us as vessels to so grab them in and, and pull them in. He said, but I can change them, right? Glory to the Lamb of God. And even as we see, and I'm sharing this because even as people are going through, if you commit to it like God told us to, to be a uh, 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 responsible, take some personal responsibility, amen, we see even how 
the tax collector, they had issues down the road. That that spirit was still getting broken because when he broke the alabaster box and, and spread the oil, they got mad. Well, we could have sold it for such and such. Well, one of them was a thief still. We know he, what he was doing. Amen. But the other one, they still, because that mentality of provision mindedness was still there. We call it a, a poverty mindset now, but it was just, oh man, we could have did that with that. No, I had need of this thing right here. Amen. And it's a level of trust. So he was still breaking, breaking things off of these disciples, the ones that were very close to him. He was still breaking off things off because he said, when I leave, I need you to get this thing right. When these people, when I go, when you go set up these churches over here and do this, you got to get it right. Glory to the Lamb of God. Paul had an opportunity, amen, to conform. Glory. Come on. After persecuting and killing folks and assenting uh, to everything that was being done, now he flipped sides. And now some were still fearful of him. And some said, man, he was the same one that told us to kill some folks the other, other week. What you, what you talking about now? Jesus saves. <laughs> right? That doesn't even make sense. But he did it. So he had an opportunity to go back and say, you know what? Too many people are against me. Let me jump on this side over here because it, it feels a little bit more comfortable. So what I'm saying is this, as we submit to God, that you're never going to, again, fit into any natural worldly group. Let me just cut to the chase. You're not going to do it. They're going to try you. The world is going to try you to pull in, right? They're going to try to associate you with what you drive, where you live, how much money you make. There are also all kind of systems that they'll try to put you in and categorize you in, right? They'll want to slide you over here. And God will simply say, well, if I've removed all of that, are you, are you still going to be faithful to me? Because this group going to get rid of you, right? They're going to tell you to kick rocks. Once you fall out of whatever their, their requirements are for that group, you're gone. You're gone. No, you don't fit in anymore. And here you are stuck to tail between your legs. Oh, God, help me. So I didn't tell you to be a part anyway. You are separate. Amen. And God spoke through the woman of God earlier. When we go into rooms, we should change it, not conform to it. We should change it. They should shift and change. Oh, Lord, I don't care if they, oh, man, here come Brother B. Man, he, you know, so be it. You know the atmosphere changes. You can say what you want. It's going to be, that nonsense is not going to be here while I'm here. You all get what I'm saying? Because I'm here. Now, what you do outside, but we're going to operate and do what we need to do while I am here. That's the power that you walk in. That's the authority that you have in. And it's not a naturally popular place. So now you can see why when he says to whom much is given. Much is required as he elevates you spiritually, naturally, financially, uh, emotionally, all those areas, more is going to be expected of you because your influence is greater. And he said on, on that, on, on the words, it says walking in uh, power, walking in favor. We're, we're living a life of favor. The favor that's on your life, certain things just can't be. Amen. Am I making sense? Amen. So that was powerful. Amen. What you said. So God, what do you want me to do? I walked that thing out many times in my life. And those of you that are listening and viewing, I vow, uh, I commit to you and, and charge you, beseech the brethren and sisters. You do the same thing. Make sure you ask God, God, is this something I'm supposed to be doing right now? I know you told me to do it. It's going to set in place, even business-wise, ministry-wise, family-wise. You're single. There's some goals you made. You have to ask God, is it time right now? Is this the Kairos? Is this the Kairos? Or I am I just feeling that it's the time to do this? Is it time for me to expand this business to this right now? Right? And that's not to say he doesn't want us to. He doesn't want. He said, no, not right now. But be mindful because here come a word of prophecy. I'm not knocking. I'm just telling you how we have to go to God ourselves. Well, you're going to increase in business. God says it's going to be an increase. Well, he told you that. He said you're going to increase and he's going to give you X, Y, and Z. He said that. Thank you. I receive it. That does not mean that's right now. There is a prophetic timetable that come. Can I? And I don't have, I don't want to. Like Apostle Misha, I don't want to jump in a hole. I'll teach it later. Amen. Well, even at times when he says, okay, by this time next week, X, Y, and Z. Sometimes that is very literal. It will be next week. Other times that, are, there, that, that week is a spiritual timetable that has a, a, a spiritual, the, the spiritual math that goes with that phrase is not, is not always what is natural, meaning seven days, if that's making sense. So I'm saying that for us to be my seek God. You receive that word of prophecy. Okay, God, what is, how does that, give me the other part because we prophesy what? In parts. 
and know in part. Well, what's the rest of it? Sister Tandy, you told me that. What's the rest of it? I want to hit, seek the Lord. Right? Amen. Amen. So I want to say, because it goes with, with discernment and prioritizing. When we, Sometimes when we don't want to prioritize because we become lazy, and I want to do I know you operating a prophetic. I'm going to pull on you. Because I want a word. I don't want to seek the Lord. Okay, sister, ask the God. So I'm going to pull on her. That's fine. Put a pull on the people. I'm not saying, what I'm saying is no one would substitute God. Amen. Amen. We bless God. So thank you again. Amen. For, for sharing that with us. Amen. Because God wants us to do some very specific things. Amen. And the enemy knows it. He knows the time is winding up. He knows that when you, we are in our perfect positions, meaning doing what God tells us to do consistently. We are extremely efficient. We are extremely effective and souls are going to be one. And as the word says, the blessing of the Lord would make it rich and add no sorrow. Stuff would just begin to flow and you'll know that you're in that vein of the Lord. So I commend all of us, amen, on today, amen, to seek God, ask God, amen, what he wants us to do and how he wants us to do it. Because when that thing doesn't work, don't say what they, this is a pet peeve of mine. So let me get on my high horse and jump off real quick. If you don't mind, when people say, well, it wasn't the Lord's will. I have to beg to differ that at all times. That's a scapegoat answer. That's an answer at time just to say, uh, well, it didn't work out. What well, God didn't mean it to be. Oh no. Oh, contraire. What if he did mean it to do it? And we just missed it because we didn't seek him we went to the right and he said i need you to go to the left but because the, the the end result that the purpose that i had for that thing was there you chose to go the wrong way you chose to open your ear to i uh, had an itching ear because you didn't want to receive the route because i know so much i've experienced this i got 20 years of experience doing this i know the way to do this thing and god says now do this way so when you go that way it wasn't meant for me to do it it wasn't meant for me to have it the devil is a liar that is not always the case so i'm saying that the, that as we take personal accountability as we prioritize and really seek god first amen trust in the lord with all our heart lean not to our own understanding and all of our ways acknowledge him he will direct our path i promise you it's going to be sweeter amen Amen. God be the glory. Amen. We thank God um, as we prepare for our uh, kingdom investment that, that relates to our uh, announcements. Thursday, March the 28th, we will have our resurrection service. Thursday, March the 28th at 730 p.m. We're going to begin sharp. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. We're going to expecting God to do a great and mighty thing. Amen. And the Lord, amen, he shared something with me. I have uh, your assignments up front amen so all the speakers will be given up to say up to amen up to uh 10 minutes amen to share what god has says amen he said he wants to do some deliverance that night he said he wants to release some clarity and things of that nature so i'm expecting god to do what he desires to do amen we're gonna let go and let god do what he wants to do so that's mark thursday march the 28th at 7 30 p.m right here at temple of faith we will be streaming as well as on the radio station amen parking again will be available across the street as well for most of us if we can if most of us can try to park over uh over there to leave uh space for some of our guests as well amen and we'll uh it's we'll have some folks outside helping to direct so that we won't block the uh the back side uh side driveway to park in the rear of the facility as well. Amen. But be in prayer. Amen. For that week. Amen. That week of the 28th, I ask for that um, Monday through Thursday, Monday through Thursday, if you would fast at least a half a day. Amen. Not giving you any specific type uh, of fast or anything. He didn't give me that. He just said, tell my people to turn down their plate. Amen. At whatever time frame, but if leave, at least if you can do four hours, God be the glory. If you can do more, keep going again. You know what you can do. Amen. But he says fast. But the point is we're doing it together corporately. Amen. And those uh, the other speakers that will come in, they're going to be uh, shared the exact same thing. Amen. But come in with the spirit of expectancy. Glory to the Lamb of God. He's not dead. He's still alive. Amen. He is still alive. We thank God. Amen. We bless God. So at this time, amen, if you would stand to your feet and those of you that have your uh, your kingdom investment, we thank God for you. 
Amen. We bless God. Amen. For we are a debt free ministry and you are a debt free people. Amen. You owe no man nothing but to love them. Glory to the Lamb of God. There is and will be supernatural cancellation of debt. There will be uh, supernatural deposits, checks with your name on it that you can cash. Glory to the Lamb of God. And there will be an appropriate audit trail. So you will not be given any dime back that comes into your account. Glory to the Lamb of God. And we thank God that we are and will continue to be excellent stewards of what he gives us in the time, in the way of our time, our expertise, as well as our finances in the name of Jesus. We bless you right now. And Father, as we are coming before you now, we are naming our seed that we are putting in the ground for your word clearly states, Father, in the name of Jesus, glory to the Lamb of God, that as we give of our tithes and offering, you will rebuke the devourer for our sake. Our vines will not cast forth its fruit prematurely. Therefore, for God, there is no chance that we will operate at any level under a period of loss, God, a period, God, of not enough, Father, in the name of Jesus. For you have stated you've given us power and authority to shut those things down. And our giving is just one manifested way that that will occur. We thank you now that as we sow our seeds, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, you are multiplying it like only you can. For you said there is nothing that can come forth except by a seed. And you demonstrate that because we've received our deliverance, Father, our access to you and eternal life through the seed called Jesus Christ. Glory to the Lamb of God. Therefore, we are standing in agreement with your word, Father, as we worship you in this capacity. We thank you that you are increasing us as well, Father, for your word again decrees that to whom much is given, much is required. So, Father, we are giving God, not God grudgingly. We're giving with a cheerful heart in the name of Jesus, knowing that we will never give out, Father. And we thank you now. And I come into agreement with what your body of Christ has put before you in regards to naming their specific seed. Father, be it done according to your will, according to your perfect timing, and according to the measure of which not only that they meet, but the measure in which they are able to receive at this current moment in time. We thank you now. And lastly, Father, we pray over those, Father, that are listening and viewing that have also partook, Father, in the giving uh, form of worship on this morning. We thank you now in the name of Jesus. Increase them ever the more, God. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you would come, amen. And to my left or right, you can face the walls and come up through the uh, wall on the walls. And those of you that are viewing and listening, we thank God for you on your on your screens. And in the information box, you will see some information on ways to give, including Cash App, which is dollar sign Temple of Faith. Glory to the Lamb of God. You can also visit the website, www.jonesministries.org. Those of you that have the website, I mean, not the website, the app, the Temple of Faith app, there's also a way that you can give directly through the app. That's right, directly through the app there, you are also able to to do that. And also, those of you that are mailing in your seed, we thank God for you. Again, that address is Temple of Faith, P.O. Box 8092. Again, P.O. Box 8092, Fayetteville, North Carolina, 28311. We bless God and thank God for you. Amen. We bless God for everything that has occurred this far. And we thank God and prayerfully everyone had an opportunity, amen, to vote during this past election. And if not, amen, make sure, amen, that you make your way to the polls in November. Make sure that you make your way to the polls in November. Whomever you vote for, that's your conviction. We don't do that, amen, here telling you who to vote for. We just tell you, seek the Lord, amen, and listen, use your discernment, amen. And uh, I will say this very boldly, amen, is it should never be about color. Amen. It should be about, amen, what the Lord, how the Lord is leading you, who can lead, uh, whether it's a local election, county, state, federal, international, whatever, wherever you are, amen, seek the Lord, amen. And then after that, God says it makes it very, very clear in the scripture. He says, pray for those that are in leadership. Pray for them. Pray for them that they are they're they're making right wise decisions that they're covered. Just pray for them. Why? He says so they can do that. And he says so that you can do what I'm calling you to do in peace so that you can go about and realize that whatever decisions that are made. 
amen, from a legal aspect, they would not negatively affect you, again, if the church stands up, amen, but you got to believe it, and you got to walk in it, amen, glory to the Lamb of God, instead of complaining, at least put a ballot out there, all right, please go, go, go put something out, put, go, go, vote for someone according to again your own convictions amen glory to the lamb of god amen we thank god for you amen glory to the lamb of god at this time if there are there any praise reports amen that uh need to come forth glory to the lamb of god. glory to the lamb of god any praise reports at this time amen amen Amen. We bless God. Thank God for those that are viewing and watching. We bless you. We will see you the next time. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. We bless God. Amen. For everything. Amen. I'm going to, I'll pray over uh, the oil at the